is the Glass Cannon Network. It's Gen Con 2023. It's Glass Cannon Live. It's another sold out show at Helium Comedy Club. Woo! Woo! Let me ask you this. Is everyone's teeth wet? <laughs> <laughs> By a show of teeth, who's wet out there? <laughs> okay. This is a wet <laughs> All right. Okay. It's a pretty wet crowd. <laughs> Look at that guy, his teeth are soaked. <laughs> it's all over his shirt. Get that guy a fresh glass cannon shirt, full price, no discount. <laughs> it's all wet. How was everybody's, uh, everybody's first day at Gen Con? Good, good day at Gen Con today? How many people said, fuck Gen Con, we're just coming to see the GCP? Yeah! <laughs> God, this week is the best. Isn't it just the best? The best. It's absolutely it is the, best. the best. It's almost worth the fact that we're all going to be really sick in about six days. <laughs> <laughs> like really sick. <laughs> uh, this is our, uh, I was doing the math before the show. This is our sixth Gen Con. The first time we came was in 2017 when we had one, maybe two podcasts. Uh, no kids. This was back when Joe could get an erection without medicine. <laughs> I don't remember those days. I know, that's how long ago it was. Just constantly popping pills. Just chewing on them. You don't need an erection backstage, I said to him. Uh, no, we, uh, we, we, we now, it's six short years later, and, and we've got 14 podcasts, a, a, a booth on the exhibition floor, and we get to play with Kate and Sydney. I mean, aren't they the best? <laughs> Kate and Sydney! The best. They make everything better. 
I couldn't be more excited for tonight's show if I tried. You're in for such a treat. These helium shows always get out of control. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm, all, I'm all tuned up and ready to have sex with strangers at the VIP party. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Kidding, I'm a married man. I only bang my wife. <laughs> That's cool of you. I promised her. (laughs) (laughs) I promised her I wouldn't jackhammer any strangers. (laughs) I remember your wedding. Your your self-written vows were really touching. (laughs) I just wanted to be honest. Uh, Skid, what are you uh, most excited for this weekend? Uh, Just these... These shows, I guess. Uh, This is... I mean, I always look forward to this show in particular. This is like... My, this, I think this is my favorite show to do every year. We have, we always have so much fun. Yeah. Like everybody's all primed. Everyone's all geeked up from being at Gen Con all day. They don't know like their body's limits, so they're more yeah. drunk than they should be. Yeah. And everyone's super enthusiastic. This is always a blast. This is great, and we love this venue. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like there's three thousand people here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody packed in, uh, but I agree. There's something special about the the first show that we do here, and it's and when it's sold out like this, the energy in the room, and we are doing an amazing story tonight. I can't wait to get into it. But Kate, how is your first Gen Con be? Um, I'm I'm just be. overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm I am excited. Period. <laughs> And overwhelmed. <laughs> Didn't you say something like you walked out onto the show floor to like check it out, and within a couple minutes you were like, oh, I have to leave now. Well, I walked into the first door because we're at like booth seven something, and I worked into the first One seven, seven door. That's not right at all. That's seven. really. I don't know where we are. That's bad I don't know promotion, where I am. We're and I walked into something. the wrong door. I was like, no problem. I'll just walk one city block of this thing. No, <laughs> no, it was a problem. <laughs> Well, there's nothing less overwhelming than performing in front of a giant sold out. <laughs> I'm still yeah. overwhelmed. But this we're... is a really easy end of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. if you can do it. Uh, Sydney, did you buy anything today besides that iced coffee that you didn't get me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything only Sydney did that. Anything besides that iced coffee? It wasn't you... both of us. It was only Sydney. That's what I thought. The line was so long that I was worried if I ordered more than one iced coffee, they would kill me on the spot. It was in the coffee shops. uh, God bless the baristas. But uh, I didn't get to buy anything because I had two shows today. So I kicked it off. I like came in hot. It was really great. Um, I got to play Vast Grimm, which I hadn't played, which Mm -hmm, was dope. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I spent most of the time, like you said, Kate, walking around the con to get to different places because it's so chaotic inside. But it takes a while. So I didn't get to buy anything. But tomorrow I'll be on the floor. So I'm going to find cool stuff. And please recommend things to me. Write to me. Tell me after the show. I'm, I'm new to this, so. There's a Root role-playing game. I saw Root. So I have Oath. Okay, let's talk about this. So I have Oath. Um, no, we don't have to. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm going to go check out them for sure. Well, that's very exciting. I'm excited for you. I'm excited to watch you sweat in that silly costume. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Troy, hot. already happening. <laughs> I'm Why re- did I wear a wig? <laughs> yeah, I'm regretting this hoodie. Uh, what about you? Did you uh, sample any local Indiana cheese flights? What do you do <laughs> when you're not walking? Line up the cheese. <laughs> well, give me your Indiana's finest. Uh, no, how, how's your how's your day been? I saw you. For it's a been bit. great. It's been great. We get we kicked off the booth. I mean, I'm I'm doing and all the tech and everything and uh, you know with the help of our producers behind the scenes and it all went well which is a shocking so started on time every show went smoothly amazing and uh, that makes me a lot more uh, happy going into tonight I am looking forward like Skid to this show more than anything because uh, I love Helium I love this crowd every year it sounds so incredibly loud in my ears mm-hmm. some great moments have happened old Joe O'Brien's character in yep. this room and I, uh, I also, this is the one game where I already know the character. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Which is a real relief. Yeah. I can just actually come and just play. Well, I'm excited for you. This is a fun show. This is going to yeah. be a big show for, for you in particular. And it's you a- are fired up. Yeah, like, dude. Like, you keep talking like the start of this book oh, baby. is like... War and peace or something. I'm going to take some of your medicine. I'm so fired up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a fun night. Uh, <laughs> But I, I like to, uh, I've been doing this all tour instead of just being mean, uh, starting with a banter topic. 
And so the one, uh, I want to get your opinion on this. I had a, uh, I had a bee problem recently. We had uh, some yellow jackets above our oh, bee door. Oh, bee, bee yes. I thought you meant like a class B problem. It's just yes. like, I've got enough A problems in my life. I just, I'm dealing with the B problems first. Or the letter B, like I didn't like all its curves. No, it was an actual B. You sexy B, get out of here. <laughs> I like a nice straight eye. Um, no, but I, uh, we have bees. We have these yellow jackets, and they're above our door, and then we had some more by the shed. Did you do the TikTok trend? I don't know what that is. I want to hear where this story goes, and then I'll tell you a thing that's going to change your life. Okay. Well, I, I would assume I didn't do it, because I murdered them all. I, uh, <laughs> did you light them on fire? I, I, I lit them on fire. Well, first I said, uh, come on, get out of here, bees. That didn't work. And so then I, <laughs> I took a hose, and I sprayed them, and that just made them what? really mad. Oh, yeah. That don't... What? But I was trying that. to like just, I was just like, come on, man, this is your last chance. Yeah, a little warning shot from the last host. Last chance, you fucking bees. <laughs> you rolled a five on an intimidation. You were yeah. like, I'll get you. I put it on the mist. The it wasn't even that hard. <laughs> but I, I was like, all right, I've got to deal with these bees because I have 17 children and I don't want them to get stung. But then I, from what I understand, like you're supposed to, you're not supposed to kill bees. They're, you're supposed to be nice No, they're to them. rare now. No, yeah. fuck the wasps. You can kill wasps. Well, Those guys I didn't suck. know what they were. And so I started Googling and I found a site that was like, we will come and we will uh, analyze each individual bee and uh, we'll find, check their credit and then like, uh, <laughs> if they're a, a good bee, we'll, we'll rehouse the bee like on someone else's house or something. <laughs> <terrorize them. laughs> I don't know. And what I do they cool. do if it's a bad bee? <laughs> if it's a bad bee, they're just They murder like, them. They take it out behind the shed and shoot it. <laughs> but uh, I... That's a lot of bullets. Well, oh, no, like, they could use a BB gun. That's fun. Nah, it's good. Ladies and gentlemen, Skidmar. Yeah. Banter bottle cap, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I looked at the price, and then I looked at the price that just, of the guy that just kills him, and it was an obvious choice. So I called the guy, <laughs> and he comes over, and he's like, oh, yeah, these are, uh, these are some bees. And uh, <laughs> I can do it, and it's going to be like $300. And I'm like, $300? That's wild. All right, fine. And I said, so how does it work? And he goes, well, I come, I come at night. <laughs> I come at night. He's like, I come at I <laughs> what? Come, he goes like, I come at night when the bees are sleeping. <laughs> I come at night. He says, I'm gonna come. I'll come back after ten o'clock tonight, and uh, I use this stuff, and it it takes care of it. And uh, I said, All right, I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> Just, I gave him cash, and he left. And. Uh, 10 o'clock came, and I was like, I think I just gave cash to a random weirdo. Because uh, <laughs> he didn't come, and I was like, I gotta be- go to bed. And so I woke up the next day, and I saw that uh, my driveway alarm had lit up around 11.40, and then I got a text from him that was like, it's done. <laughs> 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 Not even kidding. So I go, I go outside, and the bees are very angry. They're still there. They're still <laughs> I thought I was just going to come out to like a pile of bees and I'd be flicking them and doing some fun stuff. Uh, and uh, no, they were just really angry. And so I, I went back inside. It's like John Wick. He just, he killed a bunch of their aphids. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really bad. And then I waited about six, seven hours and I came back out and there were no bees. But then I just was watching. I was like, wow, that's crazy. They that really worked. Look by the shed, no bees. And then I went back to look at the roof and I saw one little bee. <laughs> Come flying up, and I just thought about his story. If he was so like, the one who lived. If he was like the, boy oh, who, the bee who lived. The bee I, who lived. I really <laughs> needed a lightning-shaped scar over his <laughs> over his eye. I just I can't help but personify the bee. I'm thinking him and be like, I'm so glad I took a week off. Yeah. <laughs> I have not taken a week off <laughs> in forever. And uh, honey, I'm home. He just walks in there, goes oh into every God. room in the hive. Oh my God! <laughs> oh no. Everyone's dead, and within minutes he dies as well. Yeah, from the horrible. So I do love that the bee says, "Honey, I'm home." When he gets home, that- isn't that fun? Honey, nice I'm touch. Home. Skid, you're on a roll. I love it. That's good, yeah. And uh, and then the other day, like a week later, I'm just sitting out there and a bee attacked me. And I think he was just like, yo, you son of a bitch, you're the one that did it. <laughs> you put out the head. So anyways, what I'm asking you is, did I do the right thing or should yeah. I have rehoused the bees? Let me tell you the trick. And I watched this on TikTok. You guys hear about this? It's not. Right. Uh, you guys hear about this? TikTok? It's, it's not the missed part of the TikTok? hose. You guys hear about TikTok? <laughs> this is my stand-up set. I'm trying to get a tight five in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you fill a cup of like a plastic cup uh-huh. with just a little bit of gasoline and then you oh yeah I'll leave that out for the kids to you play with put, <laughs> <laughs> maybe a match and then you bring a match out <laughs> and then you just take the cup and you place it up towards where the nest is and mm-hmm. the cup goes around the nest and it seals it you know like around the edge uh-huh. and the vapors of the gasoline 
instantly knock all of the bees out. Mm. And then they just fall into the cup dead. I mean, you're killing them, so make sure they're not bees. Make sure they're like wasps or uh-huh. yellow jackets. And then you just throw it in the garbage. The and ga- you don't you just get throw stung. the cup of gasoline into the garbage? <laughs> I don't know. Dump it down your drain or like... <laughs> Put what it. are you talking about? <laughs> you need to work on this type five. Also, are you going out She's at working. night? Put it like in a, a sippy cup, cup in your fridge. <laughs> you have to do it at night if you don't want to get stung. You can't do it during the day because there's bees out, and when they come back, I don't right, know. So now I'm walking around at night with a Dixie cup full of glass of gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> Spill it all over. Hey, myself. also you hey. need like a bucket. You pay me. I'll come over. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's oh, what listen, I'm gonna do. Listen, listen. I have experience. In this realm, actually, okay. I didn't get gasoline? my knowledge off of TikTok. I got it from the mean streets of the woods that I live in. Okay. So how do you kill your bees? Um, I buy poison that sprays from okay, 10 so feet, it's all 20 poison. feet. poison. We're talking about poison. And I spray it from 20 feet away, and I go out into my front yard at night with a flashlight. Oh, my God. And then I spray the bush, and I go, fuck, I missed. <laughs> um, and then I just, like, <laughs> use the whole thing somehow, and then I have to go to the store the next day, buy another one. <laughs> Come back. I've done it twice and they're still alive. My husband's allergic, so I really got to kill him and I don't personify them. So. Well, I bet you that would have cost less than 300 bucks. Yeah. Um, it's been 20 not, so far. I'm not letting Just it out of curiosity, what was the price for the rehousing? It was initiative. like $1,000. Oh, no. No way. Kill yeah. the bees. Pay kill me, the bees. Pay me right. next time. I don't care if it was the last living bee in the world. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like if there was a Noah's Ark for bees, I'd be like, three hundred dollars sustaining the equilibrium of uh, everything we know, life. Mm. We, I'll, I'll make honey. I'll find. I'll figure it out. I don't even need honey. Fuck honey. What do you need honey for? <laughs> Flowers? They just make you sneeze. Anyways, I kill. If you like bees, <laughs> sorry, I killed a bunch of bees, and, uh, and I don't agree with your policy. They're living inside of the walls of my house now, which is oh weird. my god. But at least my house is going to catch fire because I didn't throw gasoline all over my <laughs> my wooden house. You, you know what you do with a cup you of gasoline? You throw gasoline. it in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe pour it down the toilet. Yeah, put it in the toilet. I don't care. Put it in the fridge next to the Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Put it in a sippy cup and pour half water in it. That's so it's diluted. Right. Yeah, dilute it. Just put it right next to my child's yogurt. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just mark it daddy's yogurt. <laughs> That's daddy's, daddy's special yogurt. This is daddy's special yogurt. They won't daddy's be enticed medis- at all. Daddy's medicine. <laughs> Gasoline. You stored in an old Pedialyte bottle for safety. Uh, <laughs> not to mention, like, now I'm picturing myself pulling up at the gas station with, like, a cup. Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking trying to fill a it's solo like cup. Pulling it once. Oh, it's fuck. all over That's your all head. I need. That's all he I need. He must have I a need. bees Good. at his house. Was that 38 cents? <laughs> Anyways, I'm not going to burn my house down or shoot poison randomly over my four-month-old's bedroom window. <laughs> we, should, uh, we should probably play a game. Sure. Uh, you guys want to play some uh, make-believe? Yeah, man. Yeah! I'm, in. Yeah! I'm in. That's what we do. We play a little make-believe. Uh, this is a, Let's talk recap. Man, this is a recap and a half. Last month in uh, Seattle. Who was in Seattle last month? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> one, oh, wow. one young lady. Um, no, no, over here. Oh, oh, Jen. Jen. Uh, Jen. Two. Two, two young two. ladies. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah, Jen. Oh, oh, yeah, you, you were there. You were my there. two best friends. <laughs> we know. All right. Well, we did a show. Thanks for showing up. Uh, we, uh, we finished book three of Strange Aeons in Seattle uh, in, in one of the longest and wildest shows in Glass Cannon Live history until tonight. Uh, of course, the audio was completely fucked for the second time only since we started this show. And you'll be pleased to know that I was totally calm and collected behind closed doors about yep. it. Um, luckily, we don't have to worry about that amateur fucking bullshit at Helium Comedy Club. Yeah. The premier comedy club in this Indiana mall. <laughs> I'm Second to none. Spit nice everywhere. Second to none. I am going to try and make this recap as simple as possible, but a lot went down last step, and I'm warning you right now, you sweaty hunk of fucking provolone. If you so much as fucking look at Sydney during my recap, 
I will not give you a bottle cap. I mean, cap. but look at her. I will not give you a bottle cap, even if you earn it, until next year when we come back to Haley. Does Comedy. that apply to this side of the oh room, too? Because look at her. You guys, you never chat. You're very well behaved. Well, we've never sat next to each other. This is true. That's true. I am always talking with Matthew, but he died. Don't chat. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those oh, that sorry. don't know. Was that not news? What, did you people not? Should yeah. we have mentioned that earlier? Did, did you see our tweet? I, tweet I thought it went out on Instagram. McD, what? We I thought these people knew. We had a tweet, but we ran out of characters. We must have... <laughs> That's too many letters in Capita Casa. Yeah. yeah. That was a problem. The tweet just said, <laughs> Matthew much. Capita, and then it was, that was all we yeah, could fit. No. Yeah, but he's dead. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, shut up. And you guys, stop being friends. Um, Joe and Skid's characters are the last surviving characters from the first episode of this series when, as I always say... Our heroes awoke in asylum, in an asylum with no memory of the last few years of their life. Now, they have learned over time that they used to work for a man named Count Hazerton Lowell's the Fourth, and at some point, their memories were erased, and they were placed inside the asylum. They got out of the asylum, and they find out that the Count is traveling far away in search of a book called The Necronomicon, written by a man named Abdul Al-Hazred, a.k.a the mad poet, and that the Count has been experimenting with projecting his consciousness into the dimension of dreams to meet with this mad poet. So, Atticus and Aldo, along with their companions that they've met along the way, spent the last year of real time and about six months of game time trying to gain an audience with this same mad poet. And last month, they finally arrived at his dreamland's desert oasis. They get there, and he steps out of a small hot hut, holding, shut up, <laughs> holding a large tome under his arms, and he explains to you that Lowell's is seeking the lost city of Neruzavan. And in order to learn the location of Neruzavan in the natural world, he tells you that you must seek certain writings in the Necronomicon, and that you can peruse the genuine Necronomicon at a university of the occult called the Mysterium in the Kadiran city of Kathir. Now, since he gave all the same info to Laos, he believes Laos is most likely heading to Kathir to obtain the Necronomicon. Hell, he may already have it. However, he goes on to point out that Lol, Laos, Lols, Lol. Lowe's? Some Lowe's, yes. Lowe's. <laughs> he shops at Lowe's. He has a credit card there. Lowell's is not what he seems. The mad poet says that the great old one, Jamin Dor, has infected him. And he believes that Lowell's intends to use the star stelae in both Thrushmore, where you spent some time, and this lost city of Neruzavan to mark Galarian, to mark the world so that it can be brought into Carcosa. Doing so would fully awaken Jamindor, and Laos would become the Great Old One's champion for completing the task. You came upon these star stelae when you explored Thrushmore. These are ancient monuments that were left here millennia ago, pre-humanity, when aliens came to the world. If there are any Scientologists in the crowd, You'll love this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> was it the Aboleth? Did we figure that out? Was it, did the Aboleth leave them? Do we know that? The Aboleth. Yeah. There was, uh, they were flying polyps. Flying polyps came here. They're the ones that put these down. And then there was a fight between the polyps and the elder things. It's a whole thing. Read Lovecraft. Or don't. I don't really care. Um, so he tells you all this. And then the mad poet offers you a chance to regain your memories by walking into the reflecting pool and speaking with the king of Neruzavan. You do so, and Atticus and Aldo see themselves coming to this same oasis long ago with Lowell's and one by one being drowned by Lowell's, <laughs> which caused you to lose your memories. Suki and Eris see dark moments from their past as well. Your reflections then rise up from the water to try and destroy you, and you are forced to kill your own reflections. 
Then as the dust settles, you hear a series of clicks, high-pitched hoots, and mechanical static as a voice enters all of your brains telepathically and says, wake up, followed by these words. You are now free, but to remain so, you must find me. Atticus and Aldo, you now have your memories back. So let's start this session today by taking a look into your fucked up minds. (laughs) Imagine this dust is settling from this fight. You're hearing these voices and we see a wide, faraway shot of the desert oasis, the reflecting pool, the tree that came to life. And we fade out of there and in the darkness we hear thunderous applause. If I close my eyes, I can almost hear it. You can almost hear it, yeah. Well, from there, we fade up inside a theater, not unlike this one, packed with a sold-out crowd, not unlike this one. But unlike the yahoos here, they're all dressed nice. It's finely dressed men, women, and children out for a night of entertainment, and a pallid haze of smoke fills the air. Through the haze, we see Atticus Grimm on stage wearing his trademark suit, his tie, and his top hat. A rat in a hat. (laughs) Some elements maybe of his previous trick are are being removed from the stage by some stagehands. He's bowing and and thanking the audience, and then he, I don't know, would he motion them to quiet down or something? Well, they're being so loud. They're being so loud. Who's going to stand up? Oh, my lords and ladies, you are too kind. You are too kind. Ah, well, it it has been a delightful evening, truly. You have been an absolutely spectacular audience. Give yourselves a round of applause, please, please. (laughs) Truly, you have earned it. You have earned it. And, of course, I need to thank my dear friend, James Netherford who could not be with us this evening, for he is ill. I have taken his place, and you are so gracious to have me. James is such a dear friend of mine. Let us all show James how much we care for him. Please, please, a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was such a dear friend. Now, I think that we have time for one more trick. What do you say? Do we? Renee, do we have time? One more. Do one. Hey, one more. We can do one more. All right, excellent, excellent. Uh, my lords and ladies, first you must prepare your minds. For as you know, I am an illusionist. The things you will see here are all illusions, of course. But some illusions can strike such fear into the minds of even the bravest soul that it could ruin your mind. So, uh, I'll ask the children out there this evening, please hold on to Daddy's hand and make sure that he does not run screaming from the theater for me, would you? Okay, thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) Out beyond the scope of our known universe is the dark tapestry. There we go, yes, thank you. Thank you. A veil beyond which is the unknowable, an infinite mystery. He starts to move his hands, and he turns around and turns his back to the crowd. And these points of light begin to form in like a circular formation. And then they kind of coalesce into these constellations. You can see little star constellations, nine of them around a circle and they start floating and spinning in the air. But what if we could look beyond it? What if we could lift it and see what secrets it holds? He makes this exaggerated like gyration of his body and this like 
pure blackness poof, opens between all of these uh, uh, constellations, making like a portal of like oily looking viscous liquid that like breathes in and out of the portal. And there's like oohs and ahs from the audience. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Sir, fear not. <laughs> fear not. The portal cannot hurt you. <laughs> one guy is one guy. Oh not. shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, what the fuck is that? <laughs> A moment later, what looks like a liquid starts to solidify and then become almost transparent and a star field can be seen beyond with the pinks and greens of nebulae that these people, these tummies, have probably never seen. (laughs) Would anyone like to go to visit and go beyond the veil to see what is beyond the known universe. Well, maybe, uh, maybe a little girl. <laughs> a little girl. Any, any young girls? We'll say, for insurance sake, a fictitious little girl. <laughs> In a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yellow dress. <laughs> bearing no resemblance to any actual right, Bearing no living. resemblance to any actors or humans. A uh, little girl in a yellow dress gets up. She's walking up the aisle. I will. I will. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, please step up to the stage, child. Um... What, what is your name? Daddy says don't tell strangers your name. <laughs> your daddy is very smart then. Uh, there is power in knowing a name, yes. isn't there? Mm. Please, come up to the stage. Is your father here tonight though? Is he, is he here? He's right there. Dad, come on, come up to the stage as well. Come, yes, yes, please, come up onto the stage and, uh, and let's witness your daughter's travels beyond uh, the known universe. He'll get up, he'll, he'll join her, because you're, you're scary, and uh, he doesn't want you near I imagine he's up. like the size of a child. You know? Now, sweetheart, <laughs> you stand right there, and she's like in front of the portal. This is awful. I'm very attached. I'm very attached to this child. I hope nothing bad <laughs> oh, happens. I hope nothing happens to her. I will now perform the incantation of transportation, Ooh. which will take her beyond the dark tapestry, but only for a moment. She will return directly to us, but her memories will be filled of the knowledge beyond what any of us know. I cannot wait to speak to her when she returns. Why? Stand very still, my dear. <laughs> Not even God himself could prevent her from coming back. Meloth Dakash in Supia Krasit Elodia Sphex Kelefa. And as Atticus says that, massive dripping tentacles erupt from the portal and grab the little girl. The audience, not unlike you, screams. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, amazing. The father is thrown onto his back and Atticus stares in horror as he sees that each tentacle has eyes. So many eyes pulsing from all sides. No, no, not here. No, not now. And the girl is getting pulled towards the portal and into the darkness. Something is wrong, please. It it is broken. It is supposed to be an illusion. God, 
Guards, help us! Guards come running down the aisle. They're unsheathing their swords. People began to stand. They're running for the theater. They're like, oh, God! Oh, my God! They're running for the theater. Ah! Wait, no! No, wait! Wait, ah! stop! <laughs> stop, please! I, I know what this is. I've seen it. Uh, I don't know how it entered this place. It seems impossible, but I see its mind. It, it is a beast from the great beyond. An, an aberration of terrible strength. Your blades will be useless, please. A monster from the outer veil requires blood sacrifice to be sated. It must feed on the life of mortals. If we make such a sacrifice, it will rest. I'm sure of it. It will re release the girl. And he'll turn to the father. Oh. And he'll be like, you must give your blood to the creature. You must, it is the only way to save your child. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! And he's like grabbing his daughter and trying to pull her from the tentacle. There is no time, sir. There's no time to think of this. And he'll go into his waistband and pull out a knife. <laughs> and he just hands across, do it! Open your veins! Sate the beast! The, the, the father takes the knife as his people are just like, ah, ah, ah! And he's... <laughs> it's, it's, He's holding the knife, he's staring at Atticus, shaking out of his mind with fear, and, and, and he shouts and just is like, ah! And starts cutting into his arm, cutting across his inner forearms, which and blood just starts gushing out of his arms, splashing onto the floor. And as it does so, it begins to rise from the floor into the air like little goblets that start getting pulled into the portal. It coats all of these tentacles that are coming out trying to grab the young girl. And the eyes of the beast start to shudder with pleasure. It's like... <laughs> The father begins to weaken as he bleeds out and hits the floor. He falls to his knees, and, and maybe his, his, his grip loosens on the knife. The knife falls, and this thing is just getting fatter and fatter, like engorged with blood. And the little girl does slip from its grasp. Her dress is coated, her yellow dress coated in blood, and she falls to the floor beside her father. The tentacles, like great fleshy weights, slump back through the edges of the portal and disappear, and in a wink... <laughs> The portal closes. Atticus is breathing heavily. The girl is crying. <gasps> <laughs> and the room, along with whoever remains, is completely silent. And then Atticus raises his head with a smile. I know you didn't wish to share your name, little one, but... Could you at least stand up and show us all your dress? The girl stands up, <laughs> sobbing, and she looks down and her dress is in flawless condition. Not a speck of blood on it. Such a beautiful dress. Dad, you uh, as well. You, you stand up, show them. Show them your wounded arm. The father's like out of it, completely confused. He lifts his head up and he's, he's blinking through the stage lights, blinking to try and see you. And he looks at his arm, holds it up, and there's no cut, no blood. And I'll take my knife back if you please. a blunted blade but the power of illusion cuts deep does it not it is not real but our minds make it real the guy just looks at Atticus and grabs his daughter and is like madman madman and he just runs her off the stage my lords and ladies you have been a beautiful audience good night <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the audience in this theater is not like the audience here. <laughs> because now we cut to the audience and we see the, the few dozen or so folks that didn't make it out of the theater are, are standing up, just brushing like popcorn and juicy fruits off their pants. <laughs> and they dove to the floor in fear. 
But we do see one man sitting, like middle left of the theater, and he's watching Atticus intently from his seat, following Atticus all the way as he walks off stage. I'd like to show a picture of this man, a picture that none of you have seen. Let's go to roll 20. Because this man looks... Oh my God. He looks like a map. He looks like a map. Wow. He looks like this. Oh. Whoa. He looks really cool. He sits there and just watches through his glasses, oh following God. Atticus. Oh my God. <laughs> all the way out. It's horrible. Of the theater. Now maybe we cut back to Atticus in his dressing room. He's bow tie is hanging untied around his neck. He takes his stupid little top hat off. And he sits down. Maybe he's con- confused and feeling a little defeated. Just then there's a knock on his dressing room door. Go away. I'm sorry if you didn't like the performance, but there are no refunds. The door opens slightly and this man walks in kind of peeks his head in he's wearing a thick fur lined coat and Atticus you notice immediately like a a, a coat of arms of a noble family on like maybe his lapel or something he says I am so sorry to interrupt that was quite the show you put on I don't uh often get out to the theater as my work keeps me quite busy. But I'm glad I took a break this evening. Your performance was quite something. Oh, thank you uh, indeed, my lord. Um, It is something I've been working on. I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I believe you are more than a mere... Uh, magician. The subject matter of your final uh, illusion leads me to believe that we may share similar interests. If perhaps you'd ever like to further your study into such things, I'm always looking for fellow scholars to join me in my quest for knowledge. The man looks around at the sad, pathetic little dressing room. Maybe the holes on your jacket that have been patched and patched over again. It would pay handsomely as well. But there are also far greater rewards that will be made available to you. I do hope to uh, hear from you. And he reaches out and hands Atticus a business card, smiles, and walks out. And Atticus stares down at the card. And it says, Iris Hill, Thrushmore, (laughs) Count Hazerton Lowell's the fourth. This is the first we've actually seen him, right? Yeah. Wow. You've seen the Yellow King, the part of Lowell's consciousness that allegedly was left behind when the mad poet revealed something to Lowell's that was so earth shattering that a piece of his mind splintered off and stayed behind, but he was kind of like a silly buffoon. You are now remembering this interaction. Wow. So I think it's only fair that we see an interaction that you had, Alto. Yes. Yes, please. I believe it was the Boston show in 2020 where we had a flashback in which we saw Aldo uh, driving a cart. (laughs) I love that flashback. (laughs) It said, Doc Aldo's Marvelous Traveling Medicine Show. (laughs) And he was being chased down a dirt road by soldiers. And then he arrived at a very specific location on a map and he recited a passage from a book and then he was transported from what we now know was Australia to Galarian, somewhere in Galarian. And he started jumping and dancing and singing at having pulled off this miracle. And we saw two nearby goblins stare in disbelief at this obvious mad scientist. 
Well, now we see Aldo Casimir, not long after that, perhaps, dizzy and exhausted from celebrating his recent escape from a squad of redcoats. He collapses in a large puddle of rainwater. He's clutching a copy of On the Conjunction of Worlds by O.A. Diggs on his chest. Oh, right. And he's completely naked, <laughs> laughing to himself. <laughs> Oswald, never mind what I said. You're a bloody genius. Like He kisses the book and he pulls himself up to his feet and his joy quickly turns to concern because the rain is cold. He has no idea where he even is and he is naked. Yeah, so I imagine the moon and the stars are obscured by rain clouds, so it's hard to even determine which way is north, south, east, or west, so Aldo just picks a direction and sets off, just goes through the dip dripping forest, marching along, shivering as the cold starts to bite deeper and deeper. And then finally up ahead, he sees a row of lantern lights sort of bobbing along a road in the distance, maybe a caravan. And he rushes to it, abandoning all caution in hope of relief. All right, I'm going to stand up, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Wow. So he's shivering. He's uh, covering his nether regions with the book. <laughs> Give him a book. I'm not Pick getting naked. Clothes. This is all theater of the mind. We're not wearing armor and throwing actual bombs. <laughs> <laughs> so he's shivering. He says, and pound me, my friends. Uh, I'm a, but a weary traveler. Oh, it doesn't lift his arm up like that. Uh, I'm but a weary traveler, a, a victim of road agents who have left me penniless and alone. Uh, uh, might I trouble you for passage? Right at that moment, maybe the clouds break, revealing a strange, scarred moon above. We see that the caravan is actually formed of cages on wheels, all containing miserable looking prisoners. A shadowy figure draws closer to Aldo, and the shivering Australian <laughs> is surprised to see that this figure is covered in tawny fur and has the head of a hyena. It looks him up and down, eyeing him greedily. Oh. <laughs> the knoll smiles, a sick smile at Aldo and says, well, look at you, naked as the day you were born. Well, allow me to bring you to your new mama, because now, now you belong to Biting Lash. And he wraps you on the head with a cudgel and knocks you unconscious. Oh, oh man. From there, everything is fuzzy. There are flashes of you, like, waking up in a haze, rolling along uh, a hillside in a cage, packed with several other people stuffed in next to you. You keep waking up from what feels like a long sleep, only to find yourself inexplicably tired and hungry. You have this memory of, like, rolling up to a tall, cylindrical fortress and being dragged inside the building and thrown in a cell. You remember a, a sandy courtyard where you and several other prisoners were, were given blunted spears to try and stave off attacks from several dozen knoll soldiers who were using you as training partners. You were beaten and bloodied, but always kept at the brink of life. It's all a blur as these memories begin to resurface, but one moment in time stands out among all others. You are once again in a cage next to others in fetters and wearing little but a loincloth to cover you. You're in an outdoor market. The smell of strange spices fills the air. It would be intoxicating if you weren't so mentally and physically weak. As you stand in the the cage, your eyes squinting ahead at the desert scun, scun, sun, scun. <laughs> in this part of the world, it's called a scun. <laughs> <laughs> that unforgiving yes. desert scun. <laughs> Black hole scun. <laughs> Won't, Won't you come, come and blow away the screen? <laughs> You're squinting against the scun, and a figure... <laughs> 
steps into view. That's how you mess up. You make a joke of it. Um, <laughs> a figure steps into view, and he has a commanding presence. He's dressed uh, not appropriately for the heat, wearing a long coat and a hat. Circular glasses cover his eyes. He walks along this row of cages and stops beside you. Are you the alchemist? Aldo's blinking at him. His lips are cracked and blistering from the heat and lack of water. He says, I am I a uh, of medicines? I, I have been. I, I suppose, uh, yes. Well, I'm uh, sure I don't have to tell you that you don't belong in a place like this. Well, that's what I've been telling them. Your uh, captors have a uh, formula book they said you had on your person when they found you. Uh, my associate, uh, Mr. Munn, a highly respected practitioner of your art, looked at your book and he tells me you show great promise and that perhaps you are someone worth saving. Oh, I mean, that's flattering, I suppose. Uh... So I know quite how to respond to that, honestly. Well, I have a proposition for you, Mr... And he looks at the cage, and it, it just says Aldo on the cage. And then there's a space for the name of a city. And the city says Casimir. But it's all faded and scratched up, and one of the S's is blurry, so it looks like your name is Aldo Casimir. It says Mr. Aldo Casimir. He laughs, knowing that's not your real name. Maybe you even muster a smile as well. Though you can't for the life of you remember your actual last name, and the man in glasses smiles. I would like to purchase your freedom, Mr. Casimir. I'm sure there are others who would have less uh, scrupulous desires than I, so I will speak plainly. I am a academic of sorts, and I need fellow minds like yours to aid me in my pursuit of knowledge come work for me once you work off this debt for lack of a less crude word if you choose to leave my employ and strike out on your own you are most welcome to but if you choose to stay I believe you will find the benefits most rewarding what's the catch no catch However, I should warn you before you accept. Uh, I find that sometimes the pursuit of great knowledge may open the door to dark dealings. Now, you're not above dark dealings, are you, Mr. Casimir? Uh, well, sir, I must say that I've always prided myself on a certain strict adherence to local laws, but... Under extreme circumstances, I believe I could be persuaded. Excellent. Well, then I will go and finish up the paperwork. My colleague, Mr. Munn, is quite looking forward to uh, picking your brain. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get the pleasure of asking your name. Uh, Lowell's. Uh, Hazerton Lowell's. Oh, and the pleasure is all mine. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for a show tonight. Thank you, Kate and Sydney. Kate Ladies and Sydney, gentlemen, Kate and Sydney. Hi. I'm so glad you, you got, dressed up. I was just going to say, you got dressed up for yeah, nothing. Yeah, I'm so glad I did my character voice and I put on these ears. So, all right. Thanks, Troy. <laughs> you did great. We'll let you talk for the next hour. Um, <laughs> So pretty intense uh, stuff there. Pretty intense memories flooding to the surface. I I'm going to kind of hand wave here. You know, if we come back to the Oasis, you know, during the fight with these mirror reflections, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the Mad Poet just ducked back into his hut. So maybe as you're like cleaning yourselves up after the fight, stumbling around, you, you go over to the hut and you look inside and it's completely empty. It's completely empty with no trace of anyone ever having lived there. So, oh my God! <laughs> maybe from there you meander about the oasis for a little while. 
Uh, and then you decide to take all the actions you need to wake up in the real world, hoping that you even can after your interaction with the mad poet. Luckily, you can. <laughs> As slowly, one by one, you awaken on the boat. Now, as you come to, two things stand out immediately. One, you don't see Tiny Murder Clown anywhere. Oh, thank, thank God. God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> oh, man. And two, you see Ethel, but Ethel is still on the floor, asleep and motionless. And you're not sure if he's even breathing. Oh my God, Suki! Uh, we gotta, we gotta help Ethel. Uh, I, I don't know if I can, but I can try. Well, to, or uh, Aldo, uh, uh, need your potions. Oh, I've only got so many per <laughs> day. Oh she thing. starts casting soothe. She starts uh, casting soothe on him, being like, "Oh, it's okay. They're there." Oh, <laughs> trying to. I mean, he's just hired help at the end of the day, you know, it's, we sort of anticipated this, didn't we, uh, Atticus? Yes, indeed, one day it would inevitably come to this. Yeah, of course, I mean... Um, And when they die, you don't have to pay them. No, exactly. I mean, that's one less pay period that we have to, like, account into our budgets. Yes. So, silver lining, I say. (laughs) No, I think Atticus is going to, like kneel down next to uh, Ethel and like uh, like Jason Bourne style, he just starts patching his wounds and like not knowing how he's doing it. And, oh, uh, wow. I think Suki, seeing you take action, Atticus, also kneels down and since they're back on the boat, she's like, she runs, she runs to the, the cabin area. <laughs> She, what? No, I was just acting out him fixing him and not knowing how. He oh, <laughs> and then you stuff it back in. Look like uh, you're wrapping a present. She runs. <laughs> make a bow. She runs and she gets uh, her like <laughs> her crystals and her like sage, and she comes back and she places it around his head and uh, she puts her hand on his head. That nonsense and- doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Shut he's, up. He's gushing blood all over the crystals. <laughs> you I don't know how I'm doing medicine. this. I don't know. You're to just look ridiculous. <laughs> you keep making little bows on them. Let me do what I do. And, uh, I like pretty stitches. She, she casts Stabilize uh, just to... She doesn't know what else to do, but she casts it just so he doesn't straight up die. Uh, and it just says, positive energy shuts death's door. Okay. So she does that. So you do that and you <laughs> see it. Pretty cool. You see a big intake of breath, and so you realize that dead. there is some life there, but something's not right. Um, let me get a medicine check from anyone who is able to do that. I the can combination do that. of your soothing, uh, Eris, and your stabilize, and your magic um, stitching. It's not magic stitching, it's, it's regular stitching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 33 for Aldo. Ooh. Okay. Natural one. I'm way too concerned about my yeah, boyfriend. You're, yeah, <laughs> you're too, you're too emotionally you involved. Here first. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Twenty six for Atticus. <laughs> it's a little late. It's a little late. Oh no, wait. I got a, I got a better one. When I get that feeling, yeah. <laughs> that's accurate. <laughs> that's good. That was better. That yeah. was better. Um. um so you're, you're, you're examining him, looking at his situation, and Atticus, you step back because you think you know what's going on here, and then Aldo, you confirm it. Uh, Ethel's in a coma. Oh. oh. Oh, he's not dead, but I think this technically would count against his vacation days. Indeed, this is sick time. Yeah, yes. this, is like, this is like sick leave, so... He's going to be so bummed out when yeah. he wakes up. He's going to be so sad. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, my God. This is why they built into the contract. No, this, this is, is exactly Is it. that what the doctor walks into the room and says? You're the doctor. If the person he was treating was working for him and lying <laughs> down on the job, yes. 
Absolutely. Yeah, we turn to Eris and we go, don't worry, he's only in a coma, but he's what? probably going to get fired. So. <laughs> Doctor comes out, I, I'm sorry, it's a coma. This is going to be really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to be able to work. So what do we do? We just... We just, we let him go. <laughs> <laughs> to the sea? We no, put him in the Salem River? We just, and we send him off on a Viking ship. No, we just unceremoniously dump his body over the side of the ship. Into the river. I think... I'm sorry. I think that's what Ethel would have wanted. <laughs> I think that's what he would have wanted. He was a simple man. Were he didn't not? like a lot of ceremony and, you Is know. this revenge for you thinking that I killed your best friend? No, I've got past that, thank you. I'm surprised you haven't. What? <laughs> this is completely unrelated pettiness. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go about this in a careful way. We shouldn't move his body. We should just we should just wait. There's no need rushing into imagining the worst outcome. We should just wait. Hmm. I have a question. Joe? Atticus has woken up. Is he stupefied? Oh. Because he's been stupefied for six months. <laughs> and that was from a curse, right? Yeah. In the dreamlands. Yeah. Well, it was just a dream. It uh, was just a dream. A it horrible, was horrible, a, horrible dream. It was all a dream. Yeah, you, uh, you still feel a little hazy. You're going to have to have this curse removed. <laughs> you're, you're stupid. So he'll say, we all... We experience too much in that. His body is telling us it, he needs rest. He needs to be left alone to heal. There is nothing we can do. We must tend to ourselves at the moment and find ways to heal our own weaknesses. And he can feel that he brought it back with him. And it was real, what was happening in there. Yeah. No, I agree. We should tend to our own ailments. Let him, exactly as Suki said, lie there until let nature run its course. That's not what I said. No, you said, like, leave him there and don't feed him or anything and just no. let... <laughs> Eris is ignoring you all and just, like, moving him over to a bed and, like, tucking him in and, like, making a little, Aww. like, doll for him to hold while he's sleeping and just <laughs> taking care of him. She crafted a doll? Yeah, she's really good at crafting dolls. So lots of time is passing here. Can we do other shit? I can just move uh, the doll. <laughs> <laughs> no, she drags like, them cut over. Cut some of my quickly. hair and put eyes on it. You know, uh, <laughs> doll. Yeah, we could say some time passes. As... I didn't know if you had battle doll crafting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> can do it during as a single action. Whoosh, creepy doll. <laughs> You do have some time left. Your, your, your destination, uh, you've been on the Selen River now for months, um, but your destination, oddly enough, is the city of Casimir. Oh. This is the heart of Talden shipbuilding. But you do still have a little time before you get there. Now, you wouldn't have seen this, but when Tiny Murder Clown came back on the boat and replaced uh, er Ethel in the Dreamlands... Uh, uh, Skywind had mentioned, like, oh, well, we've got another little bit of time left, so you've got a little time left. Uh, however, your sojourns into the dreamlands, all these dreamlands excursions seem to be over, for now at least. You've met the mad poet, and you've found out some deeply disturbing secrets about La what Laos is up to. Now, I told you all offline that, you know, this is the time between now and Casimir is basically downtime. So if you want to retrain some feats. Yes. Swap out some spells. Yes. We can happily hand wave all those things. <laughs> it's okay, Sid. As part of your... We've all been right. there. And I will continue in my benevolence by leveling you up. Yeah! Oh! Yes! Yes! I still yes! Give it to you. On your own, sprinkle a level 10. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Let's fucking go! <laughs> However, <laughs> Ethel will remain level 9. Oh. oh no. Wow, punishing Until the player. Love it. Philly. 
Oh my no. god. <laughs> no, honestly, I think we should have a serious conversation about what to do with Ethel and make a decision about the history of this character without asking Matthew. <laughs> well <laughs> I put his hand in warm water. <laughs> I I told him he was he texted us earlier backstage wishing us a good 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 morrow. Oh that's a good show. And I told I promised him that we would encase his body in a cocoon of his own feces. <laughs> To keep him safe. As is tradition. Yeah. As is tradition. He says, if Troy kills Ethel, just don't make him poop himself. <laughs> yeah. And then Skid said that, and he said, what a relief. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so I know some of you, because uh, you're good little students, you've prepared this for a while. Let's very quickly go through the highlights of any of these things you've retrained. I know some people are way into these level ups. I mean, there's nothing better. <laughs> Who Seven plays Pathfinder and isn't into leveling up? The best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> it's like, ah. Uh, so let's let's talk. And if you retrain, I know uh, you and I have been talking. You've done some retraining. I, I want to hear. I want to hear from the ladies. Uh, let's start. Let's start with you, uh, ladies first. Kate. So ladies only the fun type. stuff. At first, I was kind of not so thrilled about getting my plus two bump in charisma. But then I forgot, realized that intimidation, which is what I'm supposed to be using to demoralize, yep. comes from charisma. So like, that's really great. I have a plus 20 in intimidation now. Woo! Nice! Hell yes! So nice. I'm going to be demoralizing everyone. Um, <laughs> I took two uh, feats that are interesting. I took incredible familiar. So my familiar, which I <laughs> use all the time, um, can do so much shit. Um, and I can also retrain what it does every day. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah you knew that? Well, whatever. I didn't know that. <laughs> and then I also took Battle Cry, which is going to be great. Um, so when we start uh, initiative, I can yell a mighty Battle Cry and demoralize an observed foe as a free action. Wow. And if I'm legendary in Intimidation, which I'm not yet, I can do more things. I'm not even going to read that. Who cares? Yeah. Um, and then spells. Yes. Ooh, ooh, spells. So one spell I took is called Blister. Oh, <laughs> it's so oh. Gross. gross. Basically, it's um, I can point at a target in range, and its skin grows blisters oh. filled with like caustic fluid, oh. and Ew. then I can use an action depending on the level of success or failure that the target has that affects the number of blisters they have. Oh, come on. And I can oh. take actions to pop them. Oh, the oh Kate. And, and... Who hurt you? And the blister goop goes out in like a cone. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's so cool. Anyway, I'm this really... It's like Meet the Feebles. It's like you leveled up and turned into Meet the Feebles. What if you put them on their crotch? That wouldn't really uh, do anything. <laughs> Oh, in the pants. That's uh, gross. But yeah, that's uh, that's all the really fun stuff. Is that um, a next level of a spell, or still you're at like fifth I'm level? I'm still at level five, so five. I got two more level five spells, that's and that's cool. one of them. Um, yeah. Sydney, uh, let's talk about old Suki, because you had to do a little switcheroo yourself. I had to do so much shit. I built Suki for fun, and I didn't build her to be a good character, but don't worry, it's all different now. <laughs> uh, so... I switched out Verdant Weapon, which I thought would be a silly, fun whip to use. It's stupid, which you found out when you had to play my I know, character. I like, this sucks. Yeah, one, one D4 damage. <laughs> the How bean cool. whip. Be bean my bean whip. whip. It's sad to see it go. My bean whip. Um, so I swapped that, and I trained in uh, my, a new feat, Mature Animal Companion, which I should have gotten a while ago. Now so, you need a really big arrow to yeah. shoot it. So basically, nice. Pepsi and I have been doing like word association games, which looks <laughs> insane to everyone else. But I'll like say something to Pepsi and Pepsi will just go like, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you guess it every time. You're so beautiful. And then uh, Pepsi now can take an action even when I don't use command animal. So Pepsi is wow. way more oh, powerful. That's great. Great. Then awesome. I went through a whole rigmarole. And I realized that natural healing, uh, I was using the natural medicine so I could do treat wounds with my nature skill instead of medicine skill. Mm. But I realized you can't carry that into continual recovery. Sydney learned a lot about Pathfinder. And <laughs> <laughs> I, instead of continuing with my nature skill increases, I retrained into medicine and I got rid of natural healing because it doesn't benefit me anymore. And I like to imagine this character-wise as 
Suki has lost people in her life. She's also an elf, and she's lost many humans, including her previous love. Mm -hmm. And I think she's realized, like, as a youth, nature was it. She yeah. lived in the wild, and it always worked. And it's just not enough. It is not enough. And she has been losing people, and, like, Ethel has gone down. And she's like, I just can't. I'm not strong enough. No. So watching Atticus kind of, like, train in medicine, and, like, Aldo as well, she's now, like, realizing... I can do medicine. I just don't know how to yet. So I've, I've kind of like in her downtime, maybe she's hung out with Atticus and they've, he's like taught her things or like Aldo has taught her things. And she now is, uh, she has the feet continual recovery and ward medic. So she, I went all into the healing. Um, so she is basically a pretty good healer now. It's not, she's not a cleric, but she's pretty good. And Pepsi got stronger. So that's the big stuff. Nice. Awesome. That's I amazing. Um, Aldo, uh, level 10 Pathfinder 2nd Edition Alchemist. Yeah, so the main thing is I got another couple of, of uh, formulae. <laughs> so among them, I got a uh, Lyserium, moderate Lyserium. What's that do? It is sort. It's like fire, but it's like it's like alchemist. It's like oh, it's like alchemist fire in Game of Thrones. So it's like green and dope. a little bit stronger. Oh, dope. Uh, so wild I got a moderate fire. one of those. Wild yeah, like wildfire. Wild fire. Wild fire. And uh, I got a got a skunk bomb. <laughs> <laughs> nice, hey. which is pretty great. Uh, and so you throw it and it deals poison damage and any creature hit by it or in the splash area has to do a, uh, a fortitude save. And even if they succeed, they're sickened one. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, and the odor that strikes them lasts for 10 minutes. Oh, oh, well, that lingers. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then the other thing that I got, the class feature, or the, the class feat that I picked is Sticky Bomb. So Sounds when I delicious. do, yeah, when I use a, a, a quick, quick way, I do quick alchemy, use one of my uh, infusions that hasn't been pre-prepared, I can do it with the Sticky Bomb additive, and that adds on... Uh, persistent damage equal to uh, my, I think, I think, I think to the splash damage. It does, it does, it does additional persistent damage. Even on, even if it already does persistent damage, it does additional persistent damage every it round. It stacks. Oh, that's going to be stacks. so dope. Oh, that's yeah, rad. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, that's great. That's great. Uh, nothing. Anything. Atticus McGee? Yeah. Yeah, he's got some good shit. Oh, Addy McGee. So Atticus, <laughs> that, that little scene with Ethel was me playing out after that interaction where we went in the water and got a permanent plus two ability boost. Yep. I got that to intelligence, and then I realized that immediately allows you to train another skill. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. nice. So on the spot, I trained medicine because we so desperately need it. We do. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know you were going all the way. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so he begins to get this knowledge partially from watching Suki and watching Aldo. And it's just like, we just, and then mechanically, we just need it. And then uh, he, so then you get ability boosts at 10th level as well, which are phenomenal. And so oh, you I get the ability boost at 10th level. Yeah. Oh, shit. And so, so, I, so I boosted four. my wisdom two points. So that wow. helps. So now uh, he can be a healer. And then when I leveled up, I went and took a level one skill feat of battle medicine just so that there's another nice. person on the field that can heal you know in and so if suki goes down in combat i could try to bring her back up so that she can you know do the heal spell and more powerful things that's huge did you guys both take intelligence as your 10th yeah. level boost yeah, yeah, yeah. suki I did you take wisdom yeah. Uh, I forget actually what I took. I think I did no, take. You get four boosts. Yeah, I mean. Oh, I, you get a yeah. shit ton of boosts. I took yeah. wisdom, but I took yeah. I think oh, everything wow. kind of. I took went intelligence up. too, which got me to twenty intelligence. Oh wow! Me so, yeah. too. Yeah, same. I didn't take strength, and I got charisma for free, so I got a boost to everything. Well, so you got five boosts basically in the last session. It's amazing. It's awesome. amazing. I regret this. <laughs> uh, and then I get two new fifth level spells of which I will not be discussing this evening <laughs> until they come out, uh, which is going to be great. They're both amazing. And then the biggest thing is a my class feat, 10th level class feat. Oh, 
I can now, Atticus can now, once a day, he can cast a spell of third level or lower, any spell, for one action. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yeah. There's a pretty good third level yeah. spells. Uh, quickened casting. Nice. So it's like having the quickened thing that, uh, what's, what should we call Meta-magic it? Metamagic feet. Yeah, the metamagic feet that uh, Matthew oh, had. Cool. And yeah. so, yeah, once a day, uh, it, so it's two levels below the highest level you can cast. So right now that's fifth level. So third level or lower, if I want to cast like a lightning bolt, I need to desperately do it in like one action, I can do it, which is just really fun. Nice. So, that's, that's it. That's awesome. Uh, almost as cool as that Captain Diet that McD just delivered. What? Uh, <laughs> Awesome. I said, don't bring anything for Joe. I, uh, <laughs> I'm excited for you guys. That's, you need this. You need this boost because you're starting to get in the zone. You're starting to get a little more tactical. Matthew's not here, which is great. And now <laughs> you're all stronger. And I told Matthew because he wasn't in uh, Seattle, he doesn't get that free boost from the Mad Poet. He, he's also dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... We'll go back to you, Aldo. I imagine, uh, you know, as you're, uh, <laughs> once you're done uh, making fun of Ethel's coma, you're, <laughs> you're just flooded with these memories that it has to stagger you a little bit. You're, 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 you're thinking about all these things. The past X amount of years have come back into your mind, but that memory of meeting Wiles has to be echoing in your head since it's so ger germane to what's happening here. And his colleague's name, keeps ringing in your ears. Mr. Munn, hmm. a fellow practitioner of your art. Mr. Munn, Mr. Munn. And you're going to miss a good part, dude. <laughs> He's got to take his go, medication. Gosh, damn it. <laughs> He's got to take his pills. Um, <laughs> it's weird. He needs, he needs that right now. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Munn, Mr. Munn, Mr. Munn. And then you think back to Iris Hill where literally no one else in the current party was except for you, because even though Atticus was alive, he was frozen in amber. So you were the only one to go into Iris Hill, and you start to remember encountering the name Mun while you were there. Now, if this was like a home game, I would be like, well, you didn't have your notes, fuck you. But I'm going <laughs> to tell you what you remember. You were in a dining room at Iris Hill, and you found a ledger with several handwritten receipts tucked into it, listing a number of alchemical products sent to someone named Myacnian Mun. Oh, that's right. Myacnian. I remember the first name. I didn't. Myacnian Mun. Myacnian Mun. From Castamere. No, I did. Seriously. He did. Don't laugh. <laughs> it's a weird name. It's not like yeah. Steve Mun. Yeah. I mean. Right. Jimmy Mun. Olivia Mun. Olivia Mun, for example. Uh. My acne Mun from Casimir. You also found an envelope on top of some crates containing a letter signed by someone named Myacne and Mun, which apparently, apparently uh, accompanied a delivery of alchemical goods. In the letter, which I imagine you probably took with you, you know, we don't talk about what you're actually stuffing into your bag, but maybe now as you're starting to think about this, you're digging through your sack and you find this letter and you see it's from Mun to Laos. And, and Mun writes, it seems that the mad poet you met in your dream journey was right. The book you seek, the Necronomicon, is located in a special collection called the Mysterium in the Kadiran city of Kathir, though it is written in Necril. If you can find a way to retrieve it and bring it to me, I can certainly help you translate and research it. I look forward to seeing you again, my old friend. It's just funny to think you, this was book two, you got this, you're like, I don't know yeah. what the hell that means. And then... And I do have my notes, my acne and mun sending al alchemical ingredients from Casimir. Wow. That's good note taking. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, you're, now I imagine you're frantically searching through your shit. And you... <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what happened? That's right. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom, so I just went to the bathroom. You're, the shadow of your face looked like you were all wet to me for a second. And I was like, what did you do? Why are you all wet? Took a quick That's why dip. I reacted that <laughs> way. Uh, took a quick dip in the green room pool. Yeah, just dunked his head in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh, that green room is sick. The water slide, the high dive. It's, it's really amazing. awesome back there. Uh, 
you're digging through your shit and you find a notebook that you found in Iris Hill, which I imagine Atticus has spent some time with as well. I don't know if you're sharing this information with him or not. Aldo, with who? Uh, with you. Aldo yeah. is remembering the name. No, no, I am. I was just saying, my Hackney man, you remember this? Look yes, in my notes yes. from 2022. Here, look. <laughs> I just did a word search. It popped right up. Stop talking to me in Australia time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you, you I think Aldo time. and Atticus, I really love this, honestly, this relationship over time as it's grown of the seeking of knowledge and the sharing of knowledge and like well this bond too that we have being the only two original people from the sanatorium right and trying to figure out like you know the answers like we're the only two people that this specific thing happened to that are left alive yeah yeah so check this shit out you read this book you find (laughs) this notebook check (laughs) this shit out you find this notebook, and it's just, it's funny because, again, you're getting this information earlier in the story and it doesn't make any sense to you, but now, holy shit, because it lists the names of all of Lowell's test subjects, as well as a lengthy series of notes about his su- suspicion that Alvar Zandalus was the key to discovering Neruzavan the lost city in Kazmaran that holds three star stele similar to those oh. in Thrushmore. Oh. Kazmaran! Kazmaran. And you fucking flip through it. <laughs> and at the end... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 the last few entries in the notebook... <laughs> We're having a good time. The the last Why do you guys read books like that? <laughs> like, Suki and Eris are just get out of the room. Yeah, get out of the room. Like, hey, <laughs> oh, shut the door, Dad. I'm just reading. <laughs> shut up. I'm just reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be done in a minute. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the last entries in the notebook detail <laughs> Aldo. <laughs> Don't miss this. It details Aldo, Atticus, Halster, Mrs. O'Lady, Burl, all identified by their real names, along with accurate data about their race, their gender, their height, their weight, all of which the Count referred to when administering the exact dose of a special sleeping drug provided oh, to the yeah. Count by, you guessed it, my Acne and Mun. Shaka ga ga goo. So now, you know that, or you assume that Lyles is going to this this mysterium in uh, Kadira, in the city of Kathir. But Kathir and Kadira is still farther south. You are about to arrive in Casimir, in the nation of uh, Taldor. So, as you are about to arrive here in Casimir, you really only have one lead. And that's my acne and mun. Someone named my acne and mun who you remember, but it's it's foggy. It's like coming back to you slowly. I imagine it's not the type of thing where like now you got all your memories back. And you're like oh oh, and you have everything back. Like it start. You're starting to piece this. It's not like I'm reading s- slowly, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Vicky like that one. <laughs> 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 you've retrained some feats you've retrained some spells <laughs> Ethel's still in a coma holding a doll <laughs> and you're you're less than an hour from the docks you can see the city of Casimir uh, starting to come into view up ahead let's say you're up up on, on top of the deck and uh, Skywin uh, Freeling the captain comes up and she sees this uh Maybe something more like a water, like a fucking water and not sad music. <laughs> oh, nice music? Yeah, nice music. Suki's on the bow looking sad. <laughs> <laughs> we have very, very little nice music because very little nice things happen. Maybe some club music. <laughs> club? No, you're, st- you're up on the boat with Skywind and uh, you're, you're long. Dancing. You're just. <laughs> just... It's so good yeah, to be good. back. <laughs> uh, you guys have been together for a long time, months. And so, no. give it to you. Wait for you to get it on. Atticus is in line at the keg. Just like, wait, uh, come on, <laughs> Spinny Pal, finish up. <laughs> Spinny Pal, let's go. Uh, you, uh, she's a little wistful uh, as your journey is coming, Dan. You've spent a lot of time together, and maybe she gathers you up on deck. 
uh, as the crew is preparing to land, and she's like, well, well, my friends, it has been, uh, it has been a journey. We have, uh, my crew and I, we've traveled up and down the Selen from... Exco, give it to you. Wait for you to get it on your own. Exco, the... Dinky, shut off the music. <laughs> she can still talk and we can dance together. People do that. Dinky, I'm trying to... You're spin. really killing the vibe right now. Well, I just, I don't know when We're we'll just see. so happy to get our memories back. Dinky, enough. I'm trying to delete my memory. <laughs> Dinky, Dinky's on the... <laughs> it is a dance party. We don't need exposition right now. Dinky, no, don't change the song. Just stop. There's a man in a coma three feet below us. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> don't let it kill the vibe, man. Let her talk. Let her talk. I've... Sorry. What I'm trying to say is <laughs> there'll be time to celebrate. <laughs> but now is the time to say our goodbyes. I've, I've, I've traveled up and down the Selen with my crew numerous times from Thrushmore to Casimir. Uh, more times than I can remember. And it's always a new adventure. I must say I am sorry for the losses that you experienced. <laughs> sorry. For your friends died. Many of your friends died. Uh, for the listening audience, Sydney's ears fell off. Oh my god! So she's just dealing with that at the moment. But we're just, all listening. They just tumbled off the stage. Sorry, Dinky keeps making a face at me. Dinky, stop! Stop! I guess what I'm trying to say is, you, you four or five are on a path unlike any I've ever encountered, and. Uh, <laughs> I'd be lying if I didn't see more heartache in your future. I say Especially this. Especially considering her leprosy. Yes. <laughs> I've seen that before. It's been a long <laughs> journey. <laughs> she is holding two bloody ears. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Suki, I think you took too much. It's, your ears are there. They're not in your hands. This happens the. You this still happens have a lot. your ears, Suki. Suki did. Uh, Suki did a bit of magic mushroom. She's having. A, <laughs> she's had her own oh, oh my trip. God. Oh. <laughs> this happens the, a lot at the end of a long journey. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is, if if whatever you're looking for isn't worth it, I know Casimir. It's a fine place to start over. You can get lost here if there are people that are after you or you're tired of the things that you seek. You could start a new life here in Casimir and forget whatever it is that brought you this far. I don't know. I just wanted to let you know that that was a possibility. I, If I was to start a new life, if yes. I had it to do over again at any point, uh, I would choose to be on your crew. You truly watched over us at a time when we literally could not be more vulnerable. Our bodies could so easily have been destroyed by anyone who sought to take advantage of us, and you never let that happen. And you are as much a hero in this tale as Suki is. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 I'm much more important than that. <laughs> and to think I was going to compliment you next, Skywin. Never mind. That's very nice of you to say, Atticus. You know, I, I told you when you came aboard, sure, you were paying your way, but that you would be considered a part of our little family here and... Uh, that, that means a lot to me. Any, does anybody else want to say something nice? <laughs> uh, I'll go. Um, I know that uh, I've been cheeky with you, I suppose, a few times in the past. And, have, yes. But now, having spent several decades with you on this boat, uh, 
I found uh, I've come to find your company uh, not completely disagreeable, and um, I wouldn't go so far as to say if I were to be reincarnated that I'd like to be uh, working on this ship. But um, I suppose, uh, well, that says it all. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, Eris, you uh, <laughs> just sort of appeared one day. Um, <laughs> but you have shown yourself to be capable, even though you have made everyone uncomfortable with just your general <laughs> comportment and everything about you. <laughs> but you've been kind. And for that, I appreciate it. Have I? <laughs> no, but I didn't really have anything nice to say. <laughs> so I thought I'd put out something bland like that. When you don't have anything nice to say, just say that they're nice. But I've seen the way you care for your dead friend. Dying dead. <laughs> dead and uh, that sort of empathy that you show to him, that, is, uh, that means a lot. I wish that uh, were I to be in a coma, that someone would show the same care that you show that young man. Well, maybe the first step is to not be like, you're a creepy, when they're not being creepy. I know, but you, you, you make everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you talk well, to your doll. Because my doll has a soul in it. You okay, not... all right. But, oh, Let's oh, not I, go I guess too that, far. You know, we have someone downstairs Dinky, play another song. with a soul in him, but we're still talking about him. He's dead. I guess everyone here is better than me. And I'm the creepy bad one. All right. Okay. Hello, all right. You've officially, <laughs> you've officially killed my vibe for the last time. I can't wait to get off this fucking boat. I'm going to throw myself into the water in two seconds if we don't turn the DJ music back on. And you were a, a fish that jumped into our boat, yes? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes. I was going to say thank you for accepting me, even though I, I too showed up one day. You could have said no. You could have turned me away. Yes. We considered it, but... <laughs> we rolled a die and decided to keep you. You are an excellent captain. Well, that's very kind. Come and... here. And she leans in so close. And her hair like brushes against your face and she whispers in your ear there are so many seagulls living in the crow's nest now I told them not to leave good luck oh man oh and I'm the creepy one okay oh man <laughs> well whew, anyhow I'm I'm glad our journey is coming to an end. And, uh, <laughs> should you decide to start a new chapter or not, I, I myself have started one, uh, as I have... Uh, You're getting married. Well, no. Uh, well, <laughs> she kind of blushes. Well, I mean, we'll see. My, someone is... Uh, You're in love. Someone has come into my life that I... I, uh, I really never expected. Is it I've, pancake? I've taken a lover is into my cabin. Chip? Oh, as of that's lovely. Who is it's, it? It's never too late, not even at your age. <laughs> it's, um, it's O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll, uh... The juice. <laughs> I'll admit, I'll admit, I was like you at first. First, I saw him as a simple running joke. <laughs> but uh, he has an inexplicable charm once you get to know him. Yes. And, uh, He's and he, may, the juice. he may be a running joke, but he did run for 2,000 yards in a single season. So yes, well, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. You were gone so often, and we just stayed up late at night, and one thing led to another, and... Uh, what, uh, anything else you want to know? No, <laughs> no, 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 let's no. Yes, uh, we put the music No, I think we should leave yeah. immediately. I think we should right. we End we... scene. Yes, end, end scene. scene. This <laughs> and over. so you see Casimir pull into the distance, and uh, it, it docks. It docks in Casimir. And the crew gets off and starts tying down the ship and everything. Like, what are you going to do? You have no leads whatsoever. Well, we have one lead. My acne and mud. My acne and mud. But like, what do you know about him? What do you want hey! to know? 
<laughs> Anyone know man? <laughs> <laughs> we'll start there. Just yelling from the dock. <laughs> This guy was like, what, you can't just yell at people on the door. What, 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 what is it that you're looking for? Sorry, I'm stupefied. What are your plans here? <laughs> what are your plans here when you get to Casimir? It's uh, bite to eat. It's been on, we've been on the boat for so long. I mean, yes, food is stretch good. Stretch our legs a bit. And, uh, uh, I feel I need to find some sort of healer. Someone who could address this curse that I labor under. I don't know where, but... Uh, Perhaps a temple or church of some kind? Yes, yes, there are. Is there are. any you'd recommend? I, I don't know the city as well as I used to. It changes so much every time I come back. But I do know the harbor master. He'll be coming here shortly to inspect the boat. A man by the name of uh, Breren Dalvos. I wouldn't necessarily call him a friend, but uh, we've had a, a professional relationship ever since uh, I got the Seven Starling and uh, began working the river. He might be able to recommend. He's a, he's a bit of an ornery sort, but uh, you could ask him about uh, maybe a temple. Uh, I don't know what god you'd be looking for, but we could find something, I'm sure. Yes. What what I'd be looking for? Well, you need a healer. It would have to be a healer that's dedicated to some deity, no? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, quite, quite powerful, in fact. So, yes, uh, I will ask. Okay, good, good. Uh, healer, anything else? Uh, what, what I don't know about, if I can be of help. What about your crew? Are they just going to stay with you? Or are they moving yes, on? Yes, yes, they're, they're my crew. They're my family. We'll, we'll stay here for uh, you know a few days and uh, look for new people to take back. That's pretty much my life. I go up and down the cellar. Maybe we'll take a week. See, see what's going on here. <laughs> okay. Do you want to... You guys want to like a drink? No. No. <laughs> I know. No, not fine. anymore. What? What? Well, I think we're busy. Okay. That's yeah, no, we're not that sure, busy. You know, I'm, I'm busy yeah. too. That's yeah. I've got stuff. We yeah. just don't want to hang out That's with stuff you. Stuff I want to do with OJ. Better if we don't. We're gonna take so. in a show. He. Uh, Air. Do you happen to know? A restaurant he wants to take me to. Oh. <laughs> do you happen to know of any um, libraries that there might be to find information? Libraries? No, I. I mean, if I. Or don't. records. Some something of the sort. No, no, I, I don't. You okay, so ask. you're not very helpful. No. You keep asking if we have questions. Just make a conversation as we've right. spent so much time together and we won't yeah. be seeing each other for a while. Um, yeah, no, I don't know any uh, libraries per se. There's, uh, I mean, there's this group. Uh, <laughs> I, I know this this one uh, gnome. Uh, he actually uh, built the plans for my boat. He, he created the plans for the Seven Starling, and uh, he's uh, he's pretty pretty well connected uh, here in Casimir. Yeah, he, he, I don't know if, uh, if he has any connections to libraries per se, but he's part of this this group called the uh, the Esoteric Knights of Evolvement. Sounds very uh, very fancy pants. I don't know what goes on there, but uh, you could always seek him out. His name is uh, Ethan Baylor. Ethan Baylor. He's uh, he's a bleachling gnome, actually. Bleachling now, yes. Ah. Pretty well connected. And uh, as you can see, the ship has uh, taken us all the way here. No problems with the ship. Um, and uh, so he's, uh, he, he may be able to help you. I'm sure he could lead you to a, a library. Uh, he, he's a bit standoffish, but just tell him you know me. And those are all the people I know in Casimir. Right. So. Okay. So you, as you arrive in Casimir, uh, aboard the Selen Starling, you see uh, dozens of uh, partially built ships in the shipyards, and their curved beams look like uh, skeletal behemoths sunning themselves on the banks. And the city spreads out around this center of industry, and you see Casimir's citizens like swarming about on their daily tasks, filling the air with laughter and shouts amid the workyard's din. A city towers at the edges of this swamp. It's called Blackwood Swamp. And there's a mouth of rickety buildings that grin like rotten teeth around a calm harbor that's crammed with vessels. There's a great castle overlooking the bay, proudly flying the flag of Taldor. Yet just beyond the dike that surrounds the city, the swampland gropes its way outward, hungrily drawing buildings into its belly. So, the crew is docking, and, and you do see, uh, maybe after like a half an hour or so, the harbor master uh, approaching this Breren Dalvo. She's like, ah, oh, there's, there's uh, Breren now. This guy comes up, human. He's like, well, Miss Freeling. <laughs> <laughs> what a 
appears your ship has finally come in. Uh, if you'll excuse the ship metaphor, you have some uh, sort of benefactor here in Taldor. A senator, no less, apparently. No name was given beyond his title, but his check cashed. That's all I care about. Your docking fees have been covered for the next five years from this Whoa. mysterious benefactor. And she's like, really? And she looks at the uh, four of you, and she's like, tell to me. What? The senator. What? The one we saved. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh right. He was it's going a great to deal of oh. pull. Oh. Yes. He must have made good on his uh, promise. Wow. So Wait, generous. how come you get it? Yeah, wait a second. We're the ones who say yeah, should Why go. do you benefit? We, we, we should go find him. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, Brerin. Thank you. Um, how much do those talking fees yeah, no, cost? We'll yeah, turn them into cash. Gosh, I think we should be here. getting a reward, not her. And that's all that was given. It was said it was meant for the selling Starling when it came into port here and uh, that Skywind Freeling was meant to be the recipient. Who are you? He says with a scowl. And Skywind's like, oh, these are uh, friends of mine. Well, the people who actually deserve the reward that was given by the senator. Perhaps. And perhaps actually, you recognize us. Brerin, they, um, they, they have some, uh, they're, they're looking for information about the city. Perhaps you could, uh, could aid them, aid an old friend. He's like, well, I'm very busy. Very, very busy. What is it that you want to know? <laughs> uh, do you have uh, any knowledge of a temple nearby? Um, a church, perhaps, of... Uh, <sighs> what kind of church? Seren Ray. Seren Ray, Seren Ray yeah, yeah, there's a church of Seren Ray. Right, right, right over there, take a right and left, and right and left, it's right there, you'll see it. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Is it, is it rather a large uh, temple, or a sort of a small dedication? No, oh, it's small, not too large, but... Shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they have everything you need there for your downtime activity. <laughs> it is an oddly specific thing to say. <laughs> Do we have any money? Think you ask him. <laughs> Matthew's not here. I'm at, no, I, <laughs> I don't know. No, sorry. Ooh. Do we have it? Do we have any money? I have a lot of money. You do? I don't know why. Do you really have money, or did you yeah. make a mistake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skip. It's a fair question. I've made mistakes in the past. So I thought I have a lot of money, even in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've made that same mistake. Yeah, I say dozens of times. I'll check in on this, but Just it does seem like an exuberant amount of how money. How much do you think we have? How much does it show that we have? <laughs> I, I have a this thousand. Is, this isn't a weed. This is just on our <laughs> terror machine. It's nonsense. There's no way. Gold pieces. Okay. Let's just yeah. move on. That's yeah. too much gold. That's like Bill Gates. Any other questions? I'm very busy. I got other ships to look at and stuff. What else? Anything else you want to know? Uh, do you know anything about where this benefactor went? Maybe the Benef senator. No, I was just, I was handed a check. I thought it was a, a, a uh, novelty he, check. He had probably put, had some staffer do it. Like it something you get from Publishers Clearinghouse. Damn it. A big one. I laughed. One. <laughs> I laughed. I thought it was very funny, but sure enough, it's real money. <laughs> Didn't say anything about you. No more questions. I'm going to move on. Right, uh, I might finish my inspection of the boat. Thanks. What, uh, have you ever heard the name of Man? Has that name ever come across uh, your... Desk. Desk. <laughs> I'm, I'm stupefied. <laughs> His uh, eye curls, man. Yes. Man. Two ends. What, uh, man, what else do you know? Uh, you have a first name of this man? My Acnean. My Acnean man. Yes. Yeah. I've uh, heard of uh, my Acnean man. We, we get shipments for him from time to time. My Acnean man, yeah. Yes, uh, shipments uh, from, from where? And to from where who? do they get delivered? No, oh, well, it comes from all over. I can't, uh, I'd have to look at my ledgers to see where, but uh, we get shipments and we uh, bring them to his uh, house, I suppose. I don't handle that, I'm the boss! Uh, okay, uh, well, is there a place we could find out where his house is? Why are you so interested in this Mun character? I can't just give out addresses of random citizens to my city to some rat. Because he killed our friend, and I pick up the body, the coma body of Ethel. Of I Ethel. throw him down the gangplank. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead. He's you dead. See? You see that? Oh God! Look what he did to oh, him! Oh my God! Been holding him the whole time. Also, yeah, I well. What's... 
Th- look, there he is. He killed him? Well, yes, if he, you don't point us at him, or you're going to have to answer for this because someone's going to have to. Are you threatening me, sir? Well, only if you're suggesting being threatened and you're all right with it. I mean, if you're game, I am. You win this round. (laughs) I I don't know what you want to know, I get. I don't feel comfortable just giving away this address in Skywind. It's like, Brennan, I've been with these people for months now. It feels like years. And um, (laughs) they're they're good people and they're part of something that uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It's very complicated. But they're, they're after something, and this, this Mun fellow may have something to do with it. They, they, mean, they mean no harm. They're, they're on the side of good. If you could share the address with them, I would be much obliged. He's like, well... All right. Ooh, diplomacy. I'll give, you, I'll give you the address, but I'll tell you this. If any shit comes back to me, I'll know who to look for. You... And you, and you, and you, and Skywin. Though your dock fees have been paid for, I could take them away like that. So, take your dead friend, and here, here's the address. <laughs> <laughs> we fish him out of the river and. Yeah. Pull him out. Pull him out of fishing net. <laughs> I drag him out. We get a fishing net and pull him out. Pull him out. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> particles and dock trash like all in his face in his mouth swamp algae just all over his mouth I scoop it out pull him out are you just gonna drag him around Casimir yeah we are yeah. we're gonna use the net <laughs> we should put him yeah we don't we don't have anything we with put... like wheels we're just dragging yeah. him along we're the dragging, streets we're dragging his comatose body through the streets of Casimir uh, as you're as he's doing the inspection you have the address to my acne and Munn's house, I guess. Um, and uh, as they're going about that, a, a messenger um, uh, bearing the mark of the Church of Abadar uh, rolls up. Uh, uh, and he says, I, I can't... Hello! Um, oh, hello. Oh, hello. I am Atticus Grimm, and who are you? Atticus Grimm. Oh, you're actually uh, the person I was looking for. I, uh, I, I come with the news from a friend uh, that you aided here on your journey south to Casimir. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, The senator. Uh, I don't know his title. He only told me, uh, hold on, and he pulls out a paper. He said, uh, remember our time together with the Stardust Augers? It's the senator. Who, that is yeah. him. Again, I don't know. It doesn't have a name. No, we're this. telling you it is. I we... don't mean to be disrespectful. Why? It is important. I don't just want to hear from someone that is sent for me. I want to know who you are. Are you? What is your name? My name? <laughs> My name is Finicky Wet Whistle. <laughs> Father Finicky Wet Whistle. Father? Yes, Father? I'm a priest. Well, perhaps he could cure your, your curse. What level are you? What level are you? <laughs> Why, I'm 14th. Oh, oh right, shit. You're going to have my friend. Oh. I, just, I, I just got it today for a quest I went on with my friends. <laughs> Father so, Finicky Wet wait. Whistle, priest of Abaddon. You're level 14 or you're 14 years old? I don't understand the question. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't do that in your character voice because they don't, they don't understand that term. Well, uh, well, let me tell you why I'm here. This person <laughs> left something for you back at the Church of Abadar. It's not, it's not far. From Let's go. Here. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's you want to come with old Father Finicky? Yes, of course. Yeah, yes, indeed, Father. Lead the yes. way. Yes, oh. let us pray. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Let's join hands here. <laughs> Dear fake God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, real devoted priest. I see. I see you're a Unitarian. I didn't expect. <laughs> <laughs> 
thank you for helping my friends and I go through that quest yesterday that got me to 14th level. <laughs> Though they all died and I got all of the XP, <laughs> I feel as if your watchful hand guided me to safety while it crushed them. <laughs> Please watch over my new friends and I as we walk a block and a half to the Temple of Abadar. Keep us safe from uh, thugs and uh, storms. Thugs and storms. Thugs and storms. Oh, it's a thugs and storms prayer. I love this one. I love you so much. And should we ever meet, I would like to have a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen, indeed. You want to come with me, Father Finicky? <laughs> yes, we, yes. yes. And Lead so the way. you leave the boat. You leave the Selen Starling behind. Skywind waves at you, and she says, Don't forget the esoteric knights of evolvement, Ethan Bella. <laughs> OJ waves as well. <laughs> And then you never see them again. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And you walk with Father Finicky Wet Whistle, 14th level priest of Abadar, <laughs> a block and a half through the streets. Slash of messenger. <laughs> Slash yeah. messenger. Here we are. Seconds later. Um, come on in. Oh, I, I didn't tidy up. And it's like, uh, it's, a, it's a big temple. Uh, and he's like, uh, all right, uh, uh, this guy over here has got uh, whatever it is that was uh, the message or something, so you can talk to him. I'm just going to stand here. And there's, a, there's an, uh, like a guy at a desk, and he's writing. He's like, Wet Whistle, what is it? He's like, the, these are the ones from the, 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 the Stardust Augers note. He's like, ah, yes. And he just throws a, a coin purse on the table. Ooh. <laughs> Oh. And he's like 1,500 gold pieces. Oh, whoa. whoa. All right. It's for you from your benefactor. Anything else you need? Yes. Well, then tell Wet Whistle. <laughs> and he goes back to writing in his ledgers. Fa Father Wet Whistle. Please call me Father Finicky. <laughs> Does it make any sense? Father Finicky... No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Father, <laughs> Father Wet Whistle. Father Wet <laughs> Father Wet Whistle. <laughs> you, you act as if you became a priest today. And you are 14th level. Yourself. Well, I went into this dungeon third level. And then everyone just sort of died as well as the enemy. I came out more powerful than I've ever been. <laughs> it was the strangest thing. It's like when Gandalf told them all to run. He got all the XP from that. <laughs> it's the same fucking thing. The same fucking thing. <laughs> so here we are. Well, 14. in your recent uh, enlightenment. Yes. And Father Finicky, uh, Father Wet Whistle, you seem so very wise. Yes. <laughs> Got two years left to college. <laughs> <laughs> Is there uh, any chance that you had happened to um, pray for uh, the, the, the spell, the remove curse? Oh, yes. I learned it yesterday. <laughs> Oh, this is indeed fated. Oh, I've been meaning to try this one. Now, I might be a little rusty, but yeah, I, I, I would be up for it. Do you have a curse? Are you dirty? I know. <laughs> now, that is a very inappropriate way to discuss yes. someone with a curse. No, my superiors always ask me, are you a dirty boy? <laughs> <laughs> and then I sort of black out. <laughs> That's how I went to th from first to third level. <laughs> Look at Kate's face. I'm going to get banned from doing this. <laughs> well, you want me to try it? 
<laughs> Please give it a go. All right. <laughs> Everyone is watching. Everyone is just waiting. We're just watching. All right, let me see. I think I know how to do this. Come here. Where's that nasty little curse? (laughs) Where is it? (laughs) Atticus is just (laughs) turning his head to the side. (laughs) Please make it be quick. Suki's taking taking notes because she's like, this is how they really do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I should know how to do this. Old wet whistle's going to find it. Oh, 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 oh! There she is. Oh, she's a nasty little curse, isn't she? His voice dropped in Aku. Come here. Come oh, here. It's part oh. of the spell. It's part of the spell. Part of the spell. <laughs> oh, you're a right hairy one, aren't you? Oh, come here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Got it! And he removes the curse. Yeah! <laughs> but at what cost? That's <laughs> gonna give it to you. Wait for you to get it on. Oh, 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 fuck. I just can't get over how it's everyone's honestly, like, it's, it's been so Eris, you're so weird, me. and you creep everyone out. <laughs> and we have not met, like, a regular-ass person yet. <laughs> you're letting him heal you, and look at him. That was intense. I never want to hear it again. Yeah. Honestly, if any of you need any healing from... I don't need... I recommend it. No. 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 Did you get your money? You should pick up your money. Take it, take your money. You just—he made me realize that money doesn't matter. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, (laughs) woo! (laughs) Fuck! (laughs) I am going out by myself now. Uh, if you ever, if you ever need healing, or just want to talk on the phone, <laughs> you know where to find Father Wet Whistle. <laughs> Goodbye. And he leaves. Sometimes when I touch. <laughs> Holy shit. So, a lot's happened since yeah. you arrived uh-huh. in Casimir. You, uh, you, uh, you met the harbor master, Brevin, Brevin Dalvos. He told you, he gave you my acne and Mun's address. However, you did find out from Skywin that she knows somebody, a bleachling gnome that uh, is involved with some sort of secret society. Suki, you were looking for a library. Maybe it's someone you want to talk to, or maybe you want to just go straight to Mun's lab. I mean, you just got here. You, you tell me what you want to do. Uh, I think we're flush with cash. Uh, for the first time ever, unless Sydney's notes are correct. Uh, so, but I say I'd like to take a visit to this bleach gnome. That sounds pretty interesting. Oh, indeed, yes. Let me do that fascinated. first. Yes. So you want to go uh, to find out uh, a little more about this bleachling gnome? And now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the uh, Pathfinder sort of lore, you want to talk about the bleachling gnomes? This oh, is yeah, really, yeah. really, really cool. Well, I, so well, I know, know the bleaching. Uh, so yeah, gnomes are. Uh, they we love you, Nick Lowe. Skid, explain bleachling gnomes. Uh, bleach gnomes, like they have to constantly have new experiences. They have to be constantly discovering new things, or else they uh, undergo a the bleaching. They call it and they slowly wither away and die unless they're constantly being exposed to new stuff. You said I, uh, it better than anyone at this table could. I, I currently play a gnome in our campaign. I, D, I GM a gnome. You GM on my gnome? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, so let's gather some information here. Um, 
let me get some diplomacy checks. You guys just roll them and tell me what you rolled. You're trying to find out like more about these esoteric knights of evolvement. Where do they hang out? Maybe some information about them. Go ahead and give me a uh, gather information diplomacy. You're talking around at bars. Do you know how many natural 20s I rolled today playing fast? Oh my God. Grim? I rolled like three, four natural 20s on my GCP die that I'm rolling tonight. Second natural one in the row. Those are for, oh, those are for sale outside the oh. door. Oh. Um, so real terrible. You're, no one wants to talk to you because they're grossed out by Everyone's your like, appearance. you're the kind of weird that no one likes. I have to ask this. Where is Ethel? Are you just pushing him around in a no, wheelbarrow? No, dragging him in the, I was the fishing say, No, there's like, there's like pieces of tin in it with him that are like tinking along the ground as we're dragging <laughs> yeah, we're the like, fishing <laughs> net with algae in it. The algae's in his mouth. So no, he's I covered with dust from the streets now. We are doing a weekend at Bernie's. I was going to ask. And yeah. we put him in the bar, and yeah. I put glasses on him and a little hat, and we put a pint in front of him, and we just let him chill. Yes, yeah. Well, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. In that's other words, treat with the utmost respect and dignity. Yes. And I drew, like, well, a little mustache on him, mm-hmm. and uh, I drew a dick on his cheek. <laughs> You guys are doing this, and I'm trying to catch up with, like, wiping off. <laughs> pulling the I just out. keep drawing more dicks. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, he has shit himself several times. Okay. Oh, oh, so it's, uh, Ethel, no, not again. No, what? no, Ethel. Uh, let's find in the... I t- thought it would stop when we stopped feeding him, but it hasn't... <laughs> it just keeps happening. Where is it all coming from? Where's it all coming from? Come on! Uh, How did applesauce turn into that? I mean, I've been <laughs> feeding him so... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Whatever this tavern she is, she rolled terribly. What did you? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? I was. Uh, let's actually in a tavern. After all the dick drawing, uh, <laughs> let's uh, get a room. Let's get a, a a room that we pay for where we can lay him in a room. We don't have rooms here. We only serve alcohol. Is there an inn nearby? Is there an inn nearby? Right across the street. All you go, right. Right. Goodbye. You go in there, and the guy's like, "We're all full." <laughs> No room. You left. sound exactly like the other proprietor. You mean my brother? <laughs> What's his name? Did you talk to that son of a bitch? I opened up this tavern 25 years ago to the day, and he had to open a tavern right across the street. Wait, so you are, yours is also a tavern, but you have an inn, but he doesn't. That's right. Why he, w- couldn't, he couldn't afford an inn. Why won't he board guests? What? Why won't he board guests? He doesn't have any rooms. <laughs> I got all the rooms in the will. <laughs> you got the rooms? In what the will? <laughs> My our parents. Rooms? Our parents. They died on the same day. Yes, yes. <laughs> you could say that. Was it a terrible accident? And you see, it's called the Menden- Menendez Brothers Tavern. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yes, they died on the same day. <laughs> A horrible coincidence. Yes, it was terrible, terrible. But look at it. I got a nice bar out of it. And uh, I got all the rooms. Any other questions? But you're full up. You don't have any rooms. Not a single... Wait, hold on. (laughs) What, is he looking at a computer? Yeah, he's looking at his laptop. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Where did he get that? What is that fascinating device? He loses her mind. Wait, this is my dad's. It, uh, we do have a room. We have one room we'll take with it. three beds oh, come and on enough there. space for one dead body. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll take it. It's weird that I wrote that in the notes. Um, you want that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, we'll 1,500 take gold pieces. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is excessive. That's extortionate, sir. We won't pay it. We'll go across the street. All right. 15 silver pieces, pieces and not a penny less. All right. All oh, right. That's by the hour. Wait, Wait a minute. That's how my customers <laughs> like this place. Wait. By the hour. Wait a minute. There is so much dirty shit going on. I know. In this city, I don't man. like this city so far. Uh, all right. So we'll put up Ethel and then <laughs> gather in. <from> <laughs> we prop him up in a corner. <laughs> And then we will, uh, yeah, people will, I will not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to gather information. Okay. Are any of you gathering information? I'll, I'll follow back around what other people say. He doesn't, he's finding himself as he advances in his knowledge of the dark, you know, stuff and what is, lies beyond. He finds he can't talk to people. Hmm. He's having a really hard time just like talking to regular people. Uh, he has no training in diplomacy. It's so low. And I think that that's representative of his intense knowledge of shit that 
people shouldn't know, and he just get, he's starting to get very skittish around people. Suki, how's your diplomacy? Are you a talky, talkative person? Do you go back? Are you one of those people that like checks in the hotel and is like, I'm hitting the bar? No. <laughs> Where'd also, you fly in from? Yeah. Oh God, Suki's losing. Suki just can't. Also, in a similar vein, but because she hasn't been anywhere in so long, she was kidnapped. She was with the water rat crew. Yeah. And now she all hail the water rat. All hail the water rat. Man, fuck that guy. <laughs> we hate that guy. <laughs> Nyrell, twice born, hate Your his ex-husband. ass. Anyway. So she hasn't been like in social settings in a long time. So mm. she's very overwhelmed, and this is because I rolled a four. Okay. So. All right. So uh, you're the last one. Did you have a, a good diplomacy? Did you have a good I, time? I rolled a three. Oh okay. my god. <laughs> I rolled a natural two, and my diplomacy is one. We're so awkward. All right. So you you learn nothing about the esoteric nights of evolvement, uh, and you I guess you want to go to sleep, kind of kind of settle in. You have some information, you have an address, mm-hmm. uh, and you wake up the next day. What are your plans? It's Tuesday. Where we have the address of the Bleachling Gnome and the address of my Agnian Monk. You don't even, you don't know where the Knights of Esoteric Evolvement are. But Sorry, you, the Bleachling Gnome is the Knights. He's one of these members. One in the same. Yeah, okay. Of this, like, I go, society. I guess we go to Mun. Perhaps Mun knows more of this gnome and more of other things. But Mun is tied up in this whole criminal conspiracy. He's partially responsible for the hour of dilemma. So we shouldn't speak. To I think we should be. We should have, be as prepared as we possibly can be before we present ourselves to him, in case things get violent. Especially considering that our most violent person is currently unavailable. Indeed. Um, perhaps we can try again. You, uh, all. Speaking with people, see if you can hear anything of the night. All right. It has, after all, been a day. Does anyone know about a gnome? A bleach gnome? If you don't tell us, uh, we're the... going to fight you. John. I rolled a 17 this time. Oh! Far more charming. I'm Nailed really it. much better at intimidating people into getting what I want. She can do that. So you start yelling at the concierge. <laughs> <laughs> and Aldo comes up and is like, hey, hey, hey. We, we just want to know, uh, do you know anything about this? <laughs> Knights of uh, esoteric evolvement, and the concierge is like the knights. <laughs> yes, they're a uh, a group of uh, visionaries, wealthy merchants who have uh, all this extra time on their hands because they don't have to work a minimum wage job like people like me. All this time to indulge themselves in other interests. They do uh, contain many uh, nobles and notables in Casimir society. Um, but, uh, you know, they don't ask people like me, just a lowly concierge, to join. And maybe I'd want to join if somebody asked me, but no one ever asked me. They only ask me for directions and the best place for happy hours. But uh, they do hang out at a place called the Sceptered House. So... Uh, can I do a society check to see if I've heard anything about them? Yeah. Oh, that's much better. That's a 37. No, it's not uncommon in any of these towns to have like, uh, you know, like the Knights of Columbus or like the... Yeah. Uh, this is the equivalent of... Yeah, like the Knights of Columbus or like the, like the Masons, maybe, you know, like a, okay. maybe like a Masonic type situation. That's that's not uncommon. You've heard of this all over Galarian, uh, like a secret society. And sometimes it's just like, a, you know, a, a men's club. Okay. Um, but nothing, uh, nothing beyond that. But uh, maybe there is... Maybe there's a little more than meets the eye. This guy seems a little miffed that he's not, uh, he didn't get sponsored for membership. <laughs> but he does tell you about the Scepter House and he gives you directions to where it is. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so you show up at the Sceptered House. Uh, it's an inn, actually. Not unlike the uh, inn from Mr. Menendez that you're staying at, the Menendez Brothers Inn. And uh, you walk inside and... Uh, it, it looks like a library inside. Suki, you were looking for a library. There's cramped, cramped like little book-filled chambers 
all off of each hallway. You can see each hallway is full of books and, and everything is linked by these oddly twisting staircases. The walls are leaning because they're so full of books. There's little corners you can see people like reading and writing at and uh, a, a, a human woman uh, is, uh, she kind of comes right up. There's no desk or anything. She's like, um, how can I help you? <laughs> Oh, um. <laughs> good, good morning. <laughs> um. Out with it, I'm very busy. <laughs> We're looking for someone named Ethan. Aren't we all, Missy? <laughs> I'm 63 years old and I've been looking for someone my whole life. Perhaps you know where he is. His name is Ethan Baylor. He's part of the the esoteric knights of involvement. I know Ethan, yeah. He's one of our members. It's a private club, though. We're not accepting memberships at this time. No, no, we don't want... Not from the likes of you. We don't want to be members. We're simply looking to talk to him. We were sent here by a friend of his. Oh, really? What's their name? Menendez. (laughs) I believe. Menendez. Well... (laughs) know him. He, uh, he's here, actually. We count him as one of our members. You're not up to any trouble, are you? No, of course not. We just have no, no. to speak with him. Do we look like we're up to trouble? Yeah, do we look? I mean, look at No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is the place to study and learn and people. So, uh, you go back there. There's a room, uh, back there and to the left. He's all holed up, but good luck. He doesn't like strangers. <laughs> you never okay. asked me my name. What's your, <laughs> What's your name? What's your name, love? Molly Mab. M- Molly Mab? Yeah, it's in the book. It? Really? <laughs> Th- thank you, Molly, so much. So down I'm, a, there. I'm a neutral female human rogue at level two, <laughs> oh, no. expert level three. I'm completely uh, unimportant to the narrative. Oh. But they gave me uh, uh, an ancestry and five levels. (laughs) And a name. Oh. Any other questions? (laughs) Well, Uh, it sounds like it should be worth a good bit of XP if you were to... uh... I literally, I I was literally just like, Atticus casts Phantasmal Killer. (laughs) 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 <laughs> tell me Never too early tell to me. start investing in that next level <laughs> What do you fear? Oh Not being loved Oh, oh. <laughs> so, so a lifetime of lovelessness <laughs> Manifests before her eyes <laughs> And she sees there's no point in going on <laughs> Roll a will save no. uh, Alright let's just come on all right, you go, go back, let's you go go down back. to the left. You go Suck back, you follow her directions to the door that's like half cracked. You knock or you just fucking storm in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> weapons drawn. Everybody up against the wall! <laughs> uh, no, we'll, we'll come by and knowing that this uh, gnome is not a fan of strangers, but neither, neither am I. He w- will knock at the door. He's like, I'm very bad. I'm, I, I gotta give him a voice. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how you find your voices? We're seeing the process right now. Uh, it's my process. You're going to see it all. Uh, I'm, be- I'm very busy. Very, I'm very busy. Please, please come back another time. <laughs> oh, my. I don't want to talk This is very to him. Harry T. I want to see yes. this. Yes. Yeah. Is this new about to do some dogs? Um, uh, please. <laughs> that works. That wrong one. Very busy. They're playing basketball oh, all around the world. Um, Please go away. We're, we're so we're sorry to disturb only a moment of your very, time. Very please. Busy. Uh, no, aren't we all? Uh, just please, a moment of your time. You keep talking. <laughs> Uh, so do you open the door? Because it's cracked. It's not yes. closed. Yeah, yeah he, will, uh, he will push the door open. All right, so you open the door, and you see this small little gnome. It's got snow white hair and snow white features, big bushy white eyebrows, and he's just sitting there. He's not, he doesn't even look up, uh, and he's just pawing over uh, dozens of uh, ship plans. 
Uh, I actually have a, a photo of him I will uh, show to you right now on the old world one zone. Uh, Isn't yeah. that? Huh. Nope. Oh, oh my god! That would be that would be bad. Uh, oh, there he is. There we go. All right. And he's just looking over the ship stuff, and he's like, "What is it? <laughs> looks like it looks like Billy Idol. I'm very busy." <laughs> Uh, what, what do you want? Very busy. I told you not to come in. <laughs> He's not even... Uh, we are indeed very, very sorry to interrupt, but uh, we do come uh, on urgent business. Oh, don't uh, we all Suki, urgent business. Uh, please, if you would. Mr. Berle, yeah, is it? Uh, I, that's not how I pronounce my name, but... Uh, Ethan Barlow? Um, no, that's not right either, but yes, I'm the person that you are looking for. Captain Skywin sent us. His uh, bushy white eyebrow perks up. Oh, uh, Skywin Freeling, yes. Uh, I, I uh, designed her boat. The Stellan Starling. We, uh, the yes. Stellan Starling. Terrible, you know. terrible name. I, I did. I never liked it. Naming it after a river. I told her to call it the <laughs> the Jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I said we should call it the jackhammer because this ship fucks <laughs> <laughs> the jackhammer. I'm starting to get the vibe of this suit. I'm really starting to get it now. But it's she, such uh, an aggressive name this, for a barge. This city is so fucking weird. Oh Everyone God. here is so horny. I don't understand it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is the horniest. This city is the horniest there. place I've ever been. <laughs> Something is going on with Troy. <laughs> Some, something's wrong. It's only Thursday. There's yeah, like three more days. It's the first day of Gen Con. We come out hot 24 <laughs> seven. Well, anyway, she she didn't like that. Name. The ship, the ship. Uh, <laughs> she didn't like the jacket. So your friends of uh, your friends of. Uh, Miss Freeling. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. How is the boat? Have you seen the... Uh, it fucks. Starling? It does. It, does. it <laughs> definitely does. You're right, sir. Confirmed. We were You're on right, it, sir. and it fucks. Yes, the damn boat right fucks. it does. I, I designed it. Actually, there's a lot... I designed it. Come to think of it, there was a lot of fucking on the boat. It actually. is in uh, in excellent condition. It had uh, carried us well. Good, good, good. He keeps looking over his papers. Well, uh, well, well met and all that, uh, whatnot. I'm sure they told you we're not accepting new members, but uh, very nice to meet you. Any friend of Skywind is a friend of mine. <laughs> that membership is not uh, our concern at the uh, moment. We uh, uh, are visitors to the city, and we uh, wish to speak with a city, someone named uh, Myaknian Mun. Do you know this name? He looks up. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I count him as uh, one of our members, actually. Uh, he's, uh, oh. Oh. he's an uh, alchemical genius, that one. Uh, yes, you know, most of, uh, most of the uh, scholars might find him a bit off-putting, maybe even shun him, but uh, we respect wild theories here at the Knights. Haven't seen him around for a while, though. He's, uh, he's a bit of a bit of a knob duck. Taken to uh, <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> taken st- stands out in the city as being rather odd. <laughs> yes, he's uh, taken to sleeping behind bars at his house to keep the ignorant and the upset out of his lab and out of his business. And I, for one, do not blame him. What are the goals of the knights, if I may ask? I'm not familiar with your group. I'm Knowledge. <laughs> Knowledge! <laughs> Knowledge! <laughs> and uh, that knowledge that would lead us to evolve beyond mere vessels of eating and pooping. <laughs> Surprised. <laughs> Surprised you delineate pooping among your uh, yes. your goals as an organization. Yes, well, it is a, a base function, but we could be so much more. We have a friend that you should study. His poop is uh, <laughs> it's it's it, it is like crazy, unnatural. Yes, yes the amount right, spews right. forth. 
bring him despite no intake. Bring him by sometime, not accepting new members. Though we're not interested in membership, perhaps we can trade in information. Oh. We are scholars ourselves. Oh, are you really? Of <laughs> the dreamlands. Mm, no, sure. Does that interest you? Mm. <laughs> it's such a little shit. <laughs> I swear. What, uh, what, uh, what knowledge are you looking to trade? What is it that you seek? I told you any friend of uh, Miss Freeling is a friend of mine. If it's knowledge you seek, perhaps I will give it freely. Well, you say that Mun is a member of yours? Yes, indeed. We would like to talk to him. <laughs> well, as I said, I have not seen him as of late. Uh, He's very, very, very busy. As what do you are. know of this uh, man? I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> and he's, he's withholding a little bit. You can tell he's withholding. Intimidate him. You want to do an intimidate? Listen, I take out my poppet. My poppet's going to back me up. The she's going to do that. A, she's going to do a little threat display while I'm going here. I'm going to be like, listen, you little she, like on the shit. desk, like, <laughs> I'm so sick of this town. I'm pissed off. My vibe was killed like an hour ago. No, yesterday. And it's been killed ever since. And we need to know where this fucking guy is. And you're going to tell us where this guy is. And as she's like yelling at you, like you see maybe like her neck mouth peeking out. From oh, her. God. And it's like, uh, it's like grimacing at you. And my pop is sitting there going, what, what, what? <laughs> um, what? What? I roll to uh, demoralize And my, my pop at, um, uh, what is it? Gives me a, uh, when I attempt... An intimidation check to demoralize someone. Am I trying to demoralize you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're trying to frighten me. You get a plus um, four. Within 30 I think you feet, said, and accompanies right? and snarls, <laughs> raising its hackles. Um, <laughs> I don't take the normal negative four penalty on the intimidation check if my target doesn't understand my language. Never mind. You understand. Language. Yeah, and you get a bonus. I think you told me during your level up. Wasn't it a plus four? Or am I misremembering that? Well, no, because I took the plus two in charisma. My intimidation gotcha, gotcha. modifiers. Okay, let's see what happens high. here. You're due. Nice. You're due. All right, how about this one? Oh, there you go. Uh, 32. Oh! Ooh, baby! What? 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 Uh-huh. what? Get uh-huh. sick of this shit. Everyone thinks I'm weird. You're the weird one. Uh-huh. Tell us what you want to know. Right. I don't want to cause any trouble. I, uh... Then don't cause trouble. All I'm right. going to kill your assistant. What? <laughs> yeah. We throw oh. Ethel's dead body on his desk. Oh, my God! <laughs> this is what happened to the last... Why the hell were you holding that? <laughs> You're next, and he's like four right. times the size of you. I don't. I don't want any trouble. I don't want to bring trouble on others as well. I count Mr. Mun as one of us. We are brothers and sisters here in the Knights of Esoteric Involvement. But as you said, you are friends of Skyrim, and I, I do not wish uh, any harm to come upon me, particularly. <laughs> Now, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but there are rumors, and that's all they are, are rumors, that Mun has had a, a number of visitors over the past year. And these visitors have perhaps vanished without a trace after visiting him. But it's very, it's very possible that they visited him during the day, stayed all day, and, and left by night. However, it always struck me as odd when they mentioned that uh, yeah, people were just disappearing. I, last time I spoke to Mun, he didn't seem in his right mind, and he mentioned a <laughs> mysterious colleague who lives with him and kept referring to this colleague over and over again as his anomalous friend. Like I said, he's a, a bit of a... Anomalous friend? He's a bit of a recluse. Maybe it's just, uh, again, rumors and whatnot, and maybe he just had a hard day of work. Casimir is full of secrets. But I, I also think that people are just jealous of true genius and jealous of the pursuit of knowledge. <laughs> so that is all I know. Uh, I, I hope that is uh, that it is helpful to you, and I, I wish you no harm. Uh, if, if you were to see Captain Freeling, uh, mention that I uh, I hope the ship is doing well. 
Only if yes. you allow one member to join. I, I do not have such a power, but um, I swear, it, if you're threatening does? my life, I will. I will talk to someone about one of you joining no, a no, no, society no, no. when no, no, you don't no, no, even no. live here. No, no, no. The receptionist. At the place we're staying at. Molly Mab, yes. yes. She's a second level rogue. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. She works no, no, here, no. No, no, no. The receptionist at the place we're staying at. The concierge. The concierge. We want the concierge to join your group. Or else. Are you talking like, about the concierge? At the ro- or else the rogue gets at the it. Menendez, <laughs> at the Menendez Brothers Inn. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> he has been trying to gain membership for years. Uh, he's not wise at all. <laughs> he has nothing to offer the knights, but I will, uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Is there any other, are any other questions you have? <laughs> <laughs> Why does your voice keep doing that? I'm sorry, I'm... <laughs> I, I, my voice cracks when I'm uh, threatened by murderers. Suki, Suki looks. <laughs> Suki looks over his shoulder. What are you reading? I'm, I'm looking at uh, ship plans, trying to plan my next boat. Okay, that's boring. Never mind. Well, to you, who probably doesn't <laughs> understand this complicated stuff. Anyways, it was nice meeting you. I have a question before we leave. Uh, I'm tired. I see you have a large. <laughs> I see you have a large library. Do you have any books on the translations of Necrol? Oh, no. The translations of Necrol? Like you want to learn to speak Necrol? Yes. 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 Uh, I mean, I suppose, but I, I, I might just lend you a book. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're friends of Skywin. Uh, all right. Um, and you could be killed by us. Oh, I understand. Here, uh, I'm sure, well, uh, yes, uh, I'm sure we can find something, and then when you get to level 11, you'll know Necro. <laughs> oh, right. here it is. <laughs> it's an English to Necro dictionary. Thank you. It's so <laughs> weird. It's like grayed out, and I can't access it until I'm level 11. <laughs> That's so <laughs> strange. Oh, I hope you love it. Put I, that in my inventory. Um, goodbye. <laughs> All right, bye. 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 Thank you. I will talk to uh, Ricky. Yeah, thanks. And uh, see what we can do. Goodbye. And so you leave the yep. sceptered house. You leave behind <laughs> whatever his fucking name was. Ethan. <laughs> Ethan. Ethan Baylor, the bleachling gnome. He's a fun guy. He's uh, a cool dude. What do you want to do? Are you, you're, you're healed. You're, you're fully healed. You don't have your madness anymore. Do you want to just show up at Mun's doorstep? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, with the bars and everything, it's very interesting. Like, yep. We might have to force entry anyway. So yep. let's just go. So you make your way to the directions that the harbor master provided you. Brerin Dalvos. That sounds like a harbor master, doesn't it? It does. Thank you, Skid. (laughs) The gales of the inner sea have taken their toll on this grim old pile, thick with the fetid odor that blows across Blackwood Swamp when the wind is high. A vulnerable-looking building of old, hefty stone blocks rises from a windowless ground floor to a high, steep gable several stories above. A single, great iron door seems to scowl at you as you approach this building. There's a small, yet austere garden that decays out front, surrounded by a rusting iron fence six feet high that's pierced with a single gateway and perched upon the gateway are a murder of crows. <laughs> you look up and all of the windows, especially on the upper floor, appear to be barred with iron shutters behind the bars. Maybe one or two of the shutters are open, still barred, uh, showing like crude glass that's filled with air bubbles. You can't see inside. This thick ivy crawling all over the building, even maybe breaking through, like piercing through the bars and breaking through some of the windows in the attic. The whole garden has is, is been completely neglected. Everything's decayed, and the area within, just beyond the gate, is heavy with undergrowth. The ground is muddy. You can see like a few weathered statues of angels 
and swans that looked like they were here and, and belonged to whatever this building was before it was someone's home, someone's laboratory. And there's a single path leading from this rusty gate, gate up a short flagstone path to the iron door. What do you do? Home invasion. <laughs> Haunted home invasion. This is great. We have to be careful because there might be some wacky traps That's like true. marbles or. Luckily, like, we're brandishing a comatose divorcee who can are, we are clear not our dragging. Path. No, we are not dragging <laughs> we him. We put him, him back the in the inn. Oh, right. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> well, you we'll approach along the path. Um, Suki first. What? <laughs> so you push Suki. <laughs> and then Suki, like, elbows Atticus and, like, wedges him up towards the front. You're the one who knows him. You see better than I do. I can't see in this darkness. I'll lift you up. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm a rat. Uh, I'll do a perception. Uh, for dangers, you know, yeah. traps, that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, ooh, that is a 32. Ooh. All right, so I imagine the four of you walk up to the gate walk past the gate and you look around and you see footprints booted booted footprints that look like they strayed from the path that leads up to the door like someone was wandering around on the property recently follow the boot prints you follow the boot prints around and it come, seems come off the path and you're walking through this thick brush Ugh. you know it's like and you're not that tall and no. so it's coming up high to you and you're, and you're looking and you kind of lose them but it seems like maybe they lead back to the path and, and there's nothing there. It's, it's just this, all over. It's like, all in this like decayed garden. Like maybe they were looking for something, goes around to the side of the house, nothing. It seems like the only way in is this door. Open the door. Well, you walk up to the door. <laughs> Open it. You walk up to the door and there is a dangling sign above the iron door. And the iron door actually looks like a new addition to whatever this building was before. And uh, there's a sign that's held by a trio of smiling angels. And it reads, Give succor to the troubled. And there's a great iron knocker hanging at the door's center. Huge. Takes up about half of the top of the door. Sorry, it says, it says give... Succor. Succor. To the troubled. Sucker born every minute. There's a succor born every minute. You can't reach it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll give you succor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> succor means to assist and support in times of hardship. Just so everyone knows. I knew that yeah. without looking it up, by the way. For sure, for sure. So. <laughs> Eris, do it. All right. Uh, knock, knock with the knocker. Gong, 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 gong. Eris knocks with the knocker on the door of this very ominous building. <laughs> the way you're smiling. Why are you smiling? <laughs> you're like trying to hold it in and... <laughs> Three things happen. Oh boy. That's a lot of things. <laughs> That's a lot of things. It's too many things. Three things happen. One, you hear, those of you with the best perception, we'll say three out of four of you all hear footsteps on the other side of the door, like coming towards the door to answer it. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, wonderful. Okay, all right, perfect. Great news. <laughs> That's the first thing. Okay. <laughs> Check. The second thing is, just as Eris's hand touches the door, the knocker, you hear that series of clicks that you heard when you were back at the Mad Poets Oasis. It was followed by hooting and mechanical static, but you don't really hear that part again. Now you hear the, the clicks like overlap with the sound of lapping water. Oh no. And there is a whisper that enters all of your minds that says in that same voice that you heard it's like the blot quivers the lake ripples the stain is 
here. And then as Eris knocks on this door with the knocker, acid sprays out on all of you. Oh, God. And we'll see you in Boston. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Guys, love you so much, Eddie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are amazing. Thank you.